Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hazelton area. Paul Ball alongside the coach, Rich Salonis. Christian Smith joined us here on Stats. Tonight, a little different. It's the Anthracite Middle School playoffs. It is the opening game. It is the two seed versus the three seed, the West Hazelton Wildcats and the Valley Eagles. West Hazelton comes in with a record of 13 and five and the Valley Eagles at 15 and three. A coach, a great crowd coming in to see the future stars of tomorrow today. Yeah, I'm psyched. I've never done a middle school tournament before. This is a big deal up here and it is awesome. I got, got a chance to get here early, I gotta tell you. If anybody's ever seen the movie Hoosiers, I happened to be down on the floor when the kids were coming into the gymnasium. And you want to talk about eyes popped wide open looking at the video scoreboard in the facility here. So this is an awesome thing. There's no losers in this. No, absolutely not. And let's go through the schedule of events for a jam-packed Valentine's Day week. Tonight we have two games. We have West Hazelton and Valley. And in the nightcap, we have the free one Whippets. They are the number one seed taking on the Hawks from Heights Terrace. Tomorrow, we have the girls. Wednesday, we will break and celebrate Valentine's Day, Coach. And then Thursday night, we will have two championship games. I think the boys is first and the girls is second. I think that's what I read online, but don't quote me on that. It's a great crowd filtering in here as now it's, as Jim Morris says, Coach, playoffs? It is. And let's turn it down to our public address announcer for this evening's Good starting evening, ladies lineups. and gentlemen, and welcome to Hazleton Area High School for tonight's Anthracite Basketball League semifinals. First game features the West Hazleton Wildcats and the Valley Eagles. Hazelton Area High School is committed to the sportsmanship goals of the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association. Participants, cheerleaders, officials, and spectators can and are expected to assist in the promotion and achievement of good sportsmanship by taking personal responsibility for keeping this contest at a high level of fair, clean, and wholesome competition. We ask that you remember that the purpose of this activity is to provide positive learning experiences and personal growth for the participants. At this time, gentlemen, please remove your hats, and those who are able, please rise and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. filing in coach you are correct I'm trying to check out both of the entrances and steady stream coming in here to see the Wildcats take on the Eagles well, I don't even like to say that
Stock will coach, assisted by his dad, Jeff, who I know really well. They've got some impressive size for middle school. And now, the starting lineup for the Valley Eagles. He was number 11. This is Jack Esposito. Jack Esposito. Number 12, Mike Ballet. Mike Ballet. He's number 14. This is Mason Eckert. Mason Eckert. And number 15, Jaden Harmon. Jaden Harmon. Two really good guards and here on this team. And number 22, Logan Harry and Harmon. Two really good guards like the pressure. The only knock against Valley is they don't Valley have a lot of coached size coach. Valley is Zach Caporell. Well, and Zach Caporell will... Head the, team. the officials for tonight's They're game. They're 15 and 3, so they must With be doing the something right. They got really good Jones. guard plays. And they can shoot lights John out. John Woodring is to his right and to his left, Midge Dorso. Thank God Midge is finally getting the game here. And I have to tell you, you've been talking to me about Midge oh since boy. I met you. And I had a chance to meet Midge. You met Midge before down or, the field. But really meet him tonight and talk yeah. to him for more than just to say hello. And Chubby's on the scoreboard. That's all. What else can we ask for here? What a great setting here and Esposito is going to jump with Santos and uh, Valley is in all white, accented with green and the Wildcats in the navy blue with the gold yellow trim and it's handled by Nunez. Nunez bounce pass across the timeline stolen immediately and they're going to get a reaching foul to stop the break. It's going to go back. The ball's going to go back, I believe, to the way they're pointing. It should be Valley Ball, correct? Yeah, it should be Valley Side Ball from right at half court. They initially pointed the other way. Uh -huh. So an errant pass to start off the game. Ecker to trigger the inbound. Gets it over to Ballet. And back over to Harmon. Harmon drives. Ball partially blocked. And a good rebound there by Reyes. And it might be some tough sledding inside with that height. Absolutely. Acasio has his pocket picked by Esposito. And up ahead, Harity. Oh, good block Santos. by Santos. Says, get that out of here. Here come the Wildcats. That's Nunez. Right-handed dribble. And he tried to bounce it. And we're going to get a push on Harity, I believe. 5.19 to go in the opening quarter. No score here. And it'll be interesting to see, Coach, how these middle school kids adjust to the bigger facility here. Well, so far, so good. They're, they're up and down the court just fine. Just turnovers. Might Nun be a little nervousness. Yeah, Nunez off the screen. Bounce pass now back over to Ocasio. Swings it back over to Reyes. Reyes drives in the lane. Throws it up. Can't get it to fall. Rebound by Ball. A ball batted around into the hands of Gleam. And tried to save it, but he threw it right into the hands of Esposito. Up ahead. Harry lays it up and in. And the first two points of the game. Nice job by Harry shielding that ball so it couldn't get blocked. And another turnover, Paul. Yep. Turnover in the hands of Esposito. And he threw it away. And it's going to be a turnover for Valley. So lots of turnovers in the early going. What do you think? A little bit of nerves possibly? Yeah, I, I think adrenaline? so. You're playing against I mean, a really nice crowd here tonight in a state-of-the-art, almost like a college atmosphere here at Hazel area. And in the hands of Reyes. Reyes drives in the paint, hangs in the air, can't get it to fall. Ball batter right back to him. Reyes, pass on the block, off the window, up and in goes Santos. They're yeah, using his hike to his, adva to his advantage. And Put and that one back in. West Hazleton has some bigs down low. Harmon across the timeline, drives to the basket, coast to coast, and he will go to the line to shoot a pair. As the foul is going to be on, I cannot see I from that I think it's going to be in. David Reyes, number 10, I believe. I could be wrong there. It's either 10 or Nunez, number 2. It's going to be on Nunez. They just put the foul up. And Jaden Harmon is going to shoot a pair. Well, no lack of quickness, Paul, getting up and down the court. First one up, and first one is off the back iron. 
And again, Coach, we, we stress free throws all the time. It's going to be very important here in a playoff game. Three points, right? Armin takes his time, some good rotation high, and that is short. And into the hands of Nunoz. Boy, Nunoz all over the court, huh? Yeah, he's, he's got some speed to him. And in the passing lane, Harrity turns it over and misses the bunny. Yeah, Harmon. Is Harmon. Turned right back over. Turned right back almost over again. Little game of ping pong going back and forth here. We're going to have a jump ball. Yeah, we're in a bakery here so far, Paul. Lots of turnovers. And it's going to be West Hazleton ball. Substitution into the ball game. Winner Rivera. And David Reyes is going to have a seat for the Wildcats. Down low. That's That's Esposito. Esposito. Yep, lays it up and in. That's a nice rhyme there, Paul. Down low for Esposito for two. Santos. Up ahead. Oh, nice drive to the basket. Can't finish his Rivera. Nunez tracks down the loose ball. Being guarded by three Eagles and Santos inside missed the bunny again. Boy, what a wonderful entry pass by him. He's got some superb quickness. It's hard to see from up here, coach, but he's definitely over six foot tall. That he is. Seventh and eighth graders, and you talk about that, and you know, this is the feeding system to a lot of different schools. You know, mostly Hazleton area we want to see most of these kids go, but it's also for MMI and future preppers or future Marion Colts, you know, some of the schools around the area. This is where it all starts. Absolutely. And you know, they they, uh, they got a great program here. Kathy Brogan runs the league and does a great job, and I want to thank her for providing me with all the rosters, her and Damian. They really did a great job in setting this tournament up here, and this is first class. Gleam with the ball, now hands it back to Nunez. Nunez drives right down the lane. Santos picks it up again, can't get it to fall. Inside and just too strong underneath. Yeah, too strong and too tall, he's towering over. He has all four of the Wildcats points. 2.37 to go, clock moving in the first quarter. Pass to Herity. Drives down the lane, up and in. And Herity has four for Valley. Over to Santos. Santos back to Nunez, top of the key. He's out by that volleyball spike line there, Coach. Rivera swings it back across. Over to Gleam, down to Santos. Back out to Nunez. Nunez drives, penetrates, initiates the contact. And it'll be a blocking foul on Jaden Harmon. And Yaniel's going to go to the line to shoot a pair. Unless they're calling him on the floor. Let's see, coach. Well, that's going to be Rivera going to the line. It is. The white sleeves threw me off. That's okay. Doing your usual stellar job with the pace of the game going <laughs> up and down the court. It's frantic, to say the least. First one up, first one good. Pretty interesting. Who do we spot over in the corner? Having a keen eye on what he's hoping, I'm sure, are some of his future players. Oh, Kiko's sitting over there, yep. Red sweats on. Asoro into the game. Asoria, excuse me. That'd be Brandon Asoria, number 14. We're knotted up at six with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Armin across the timeline. Kicks it back out. Three ball on the way from way behind the arc. No good. And rebounded by Balai. Back to Harmon. Harmon kicks it back out. Ball at mid-range jumper is blocked by Nunez. Nunez, one of the smallest kids on the court. He's all over the place. I really like the way this kid plays. He plays with a ton of energy. Nunez over to Santos. Santos picks up his dribble. Back over to Nunez easily across the timeline. 131 to go. And back over to Gleam. Gleam kicks it back over to Rivera. And back over to Nunez. Nice pass down low. Gives it up off the window, up and in. Oh, excellent pass. Asoria. And that was a beautiful pass from Santos via Nunez. Armin has it on his hip. 
Falling to the ground, Nunez picks up the loose ball. Santos up ahead. Rivera runs it down, long pass to Soria. Picks up his dribble, mid-range jumper, no good, follows his shot. Last minute of play in the period, and Wes Hazelton looking to reset. And they do, back to Nunez, 47 seconds, three ball on the way. Now we've got a foul. Off the rim. A offense foul call by Midge. Ball going the other way. This has been an extremely entertaining and fast-paced first quarter. It has been Marcus West into the ball game for West Hazelton. And checking in for Valley is number 30, Danny Zola. And he will give Eckert a break. And here comes Logan Herity. Left-handed dribble, now over to the right hand across the timeline, 40 seconds to go. West Hazelton really defensively sound there. The nice defense by Acosta. Rivera picks it up. That ball's partially tipped and into the hands of Acasio. Right back to Nunez. Rivera with the running one-hander, no good. And that should be, oh, it's going to be Valley ball as I thought it hit off an eagle, but my eagle eye did not pay dividends there, coach. Nope. 17 Se seconds to go. One shot here, Paul. Yeah, well, yeah. 8-6 West Hazelton. Esposito. Over to Bale. Back over to Jack, over to Harmon. Two seconds, he better hurry. Partially blocked at the horn. It counts if it goes, and it does not. One quarter in the books here, 8-6. West Hazelton leads. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be back to Hazel area. Welcome back here, eight to six. West Hazelton leads in the, at the end of the first quarter. West Hazelton, three of 10 from the field. They had seven turnovers, seven rebounds for Valley, three of 11 from the field, one, oh for one from behind the arc, five turnovers, three rebounds for the Eagles. It's been a nip and tuck game, coach. It has been an extremely entertaining game. So what do you, what mostly are you impressed with with each squad so far after one period? Well, just the physical height of the Wildcats from West Hazelton. Nunez just reminds me of, of a, an Ener Energizer bunny. <laughs> and I think Valley's, Valley's got some decent kids, Harity, et cetera, that are getting up and down the court. And there's good athleticism, obviously, good quickness on both teams. And that's going to be off as Harity dribbled it off his knee. Valley has a lot of athletes. West Hazelton, I'm very surprised with how big they are and had how agile they are also. Easily breaks the press. Up and lays it in. This is Soria. Yeah, Soria did a wonderful job of looking off the defender that time. He had some help on the opposite wing. He looked them off and was able to put the ball in for two. And Rivera's one of those defensive players. Look at him, hands on the wheel there. Drive right down the middle and Harity will go to the line. A nice job by Harity getting an opportunity to score some points. Tough sledding, as we've mentioned, inside with numerous Wildcats who have above average height for a middle school team, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Harity on the line shooting two. And you know, Paul, sometimes at this age, kids haven't grown into that height. That doesn't appear to be the case here. No. These kids are, are athletic. They're, you know, they're not clumsy. They're not fallen over themselves. So. No, no, this is a very well-played game. And that's a credit to both of the coaches and the programs here. And they may have a turnover, you know, with their excitement at the beginning, but athletically, boy, they're, they're, they're good. And I think Valley's having a hard time with the big gym. You see that all that room in the background? It's hard to adjust, and they'll adjust. They're a good team. They're a disciplined team. 
You don't win fi uh, 15 games by accident. Osoria, he's been dynamite here. Over to Rivera, back out long. Trey in and out, and a rebound by Harity as he, or excuse me, that was Bale as he cleared the boards and up ahead to Harmon. And Suriel's in the game. Harmon, nice dish down low. Missed the bunny is Esposito, and they're going to call a travel here. Or excuse me, Aponic had a shot, an opportunity there. He'll be inbounding the ball for Valley. Yep. Running jumper there. And yeah, nice use of his pivot foot, just didn't put the ball in the basket. And in the hands of Nunez. Nunez long pass up. A nice bounce pass west in the lane. Back up to Soria. Rivera. Good block by Aponic. West at the doorstep. Can't get it to fall. Valley got numbers if they hurry. Harmon, coast to coast. Oh, plays up and in. That was well done by Jaden. Asoria back out to Nunez, 4.18 to go in the half. Uses a hand to fend off the defender. Rivera, they gave him the three, he passed it up. And it's back into the hands of Ocasio. Acuzio, excuse me. My mistake. We got a substitution into the ball game and Santos coming back in. Correct, coming back in. Marcus West having the seat, I believe. Boy, West, West Hazleton is very deep. They've rolled about nine players so far. Correct. Triggers the inbound into Nunez. Nunez back to Rivera. Back over to Yaniel. 3.54 to go. Right-handed dribble all the way. Picks up his dribble. Almost threw it away, but back into the hands of Asoria. And, and he walked. took steps. Yeah, he had an idea where he wanted to go with the ball in his mind, and his body took him elsewhere. 3.45 left. Going to trigger the inbound. Up ahead to Harmon. Harmon, no look pass to Aponic. And Asura pulled on another rebound. Santos in, shields his body. Use the board, young man. There it is, up and in. Give him six. And a nice job by Justin there, not quitting off the first miss. Was aggressive, went after his miss, and was able to put it in. We have a timeout on the floor. Timeout on the floor. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here, Coach. You give Justin six. Are you, are you surprised how well, for the big guys that West Hazen has, how well they run the court? I am, as I was saying earlier. You know, you see a lot of times at this age, you'll see the kids physically, and you'll say, wow, you know, when they grow into their body, when, but they, I mean extremely impressed with the athleticism. Yeah, both sides. And, and, and Valley, the guard play, I mean, both of their guards can really handle the ball. And you know, you can coach a lot of things. Athleticism is very difficult to coach. And a lot of these players have it. Don't appear to have it. They definitely have it. So... Valet's going to trigger the inbound over to Harmon, and Harmon's going to jog it up the court. Left hand over to the right, 3.22 to go in the half. 12-8, West Hazleton. I think he got away with a travel there. Into the hands of Santos. Another and board. back out to Nunez. Nunez almost had his pocket picked. Weaving around, running one-hander hard off the boards. Into the hands of Rivera, West Hazel and backs it back out. Nice pass down low, trying to get to the big man. The ball's gonna go over to the Eagles. One pass too many, I think. Yeah. Right idea, just one extra pass. And that was off the hands of Asori, I believe. It was. Or was it Santos? It, it was, was one. I think it was Santos. Asori made the extra pass, I believe. Harmon picks up his dribble. Chest high. Over to Harity. Harity bounce pass. Caught in the air is Eckert. And they're going to get a loose ball foul on Mason. Yeah, and they're doing all they can. They're, they're battling in there, but they're severely outsized underneath. 
Santos, I, I believe that's at least, by my count, that's at least his fourth rebound, yeah. I believe. He's, Up ahead he's, to Rivera. Rivera can handle the ball, too. Nice pass. Santos, that is going to be off his hands. And like you said, a little bit too many passes there with 2.22 to go in the half here. 12 to 8. West Hazleton leads. You are watching the Anthracite Middle School playoffs first round a 2-3 matchup. And they're going to get steps there on Harity. Yeah, and he did take him. A little surprised that Valley's not creating a couple more outside shots for their shooters because they're having issues getting the ball inside yeah. with the height. Rivera with the ball on his hip. Back out. Asori, I thought he had long three by Nunez. No good. And into the hands of Esposito. Esposito up ahead to Herity. Herity and lays it in and he's fouled. Yeah, nice job. And he's got a chance to get three the old-fashioned way, as you would say it. Give him six. Trying to cut this lead down to one. Eagles battling underneath. And banks it in. Banks. Open late tonight, Paul Bow. One point lead for West Hazleton. Santos. Oh, throws it away. Harry with the steal. Throws it in reverse. Can't get it to fall. Harmon picks it up and he'll go to the line. And that's going to be the 17th foul also, but this will be a two-shot foul. And that's the second foul on Santos there. Harmon going to get his two foul shots with an opportunity to tie and possibly put the Eagles in front. First one up is no good. Second one on its way, rims out, ball tipped around, and oh, it's going to stay here with Valley as Santos tipped it. 1.30 to go here, 12-11. West Hazleton leads, they've gone cold from the field. Three ball on the way, and that's a little hard. That missed everything. In the hands of Nunoz. Nunoz jogs it up across the timeline, 121 to go. Over to Casio. A little bit too much English on the pass from Ocasio. Another turnover for the Wildcats. Substitution into the game. Brandon Osorio. David Reyes coming in. For Osorio. And Eckert's going to trigger the inbound over to Harmon. Harmon walks it up. Over to Spazino. Back over, Jack spots up for a long three, he's got it! Oh, money. Knocked it right down. Give Valley their first lead in a long time. They give him a two on that, Coach? It looks like a three to me. I thought it was a three, but they only put up 13 points. Nope, they're just announcing it now. Two points. Santos, finger roll, can't get the fall, gets his own rebound. Turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound by Reyes, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. And there were at least two Eagles underneath there, so let's try and see if we can get on the scoreboard who they're going to award the foul to. I think it's on 14. It is, Mason Eckert. Here comes our halftime guest, Chad Obert, coming up on behalf of the officials. He's shaking hands and kissing babies all the way up. Ray, a second one on the way, is good. Tied at 13, 40 seconds to go. 
And Harmon across the timeline. Harden puts it on his hip. Into the hands of Santos. Up ahead to Nunez. Wildcats looking to run here. And they're going to call a jump ball, and it's going to be Valley ball with 25 seconds to go in the half. See if Valley holds for one shot here, Coach. Valley, back out to Harmon. You appear to be correct. Harmon looks to come off the screen, 13 seconds to go. Over to the right hand, now back to the left. And he's traveled there, and he it's going to be four seconds to go. And it looks like probably that's the way the half's going to end here, tied to 13. We'll see if someone can launch a missile from half court. Eagles are not going to pressure the ball. It's always been a chicken and egg thing. And here's your shot at the buzzer. It counts if it goes. They got the ball up court pretty quick. And they did. We're tied at the half ball. At the half, we are dead locked at 13. Santos leading the way for West Hazleton with six. And Harity for Valley with seven. Let's take a quick break. We got a halftime guest coming up here. We'll be back. Let me know when we're back. Here, right? I'm not, two I'm years, not, I two think. Years, I'm yeah. not sure if it's next year. All right, we're back here at Hazel Area. We are deadlocked here at the half at 13. and. What a special guest we have up here at halftime. Midge is on the court, so we couldn't get Midge up here. We got my good friend, Chad Obert. Chad, PIAA official for how many years now? This is my 10th year. Thank wow. you for having me. 10th wow. year, year, and it's great to have you up here. And You know, we, we talk about the officials all the time, how District 2, District 4, the games that we do, they need officials. Correct. You know, for all sports. So all sports. How do they go about, you know, contacting who to contact, the website, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the Tell best, us how to get involved. Well, best they can do right now is go on to PIAA.org and look for become an official and click on that link and you go to the process. You register, you pick your sport. There is a fee. I'm not really sure what it is at this time. And then you move forward and you, you, you know, you, you, they send you the material when you send the, the fee in. You, then you um, study for the test. They take the test, you pass. Then they'll contact you. Let they'll give you a list of chapters to join. Um, you pick that particular chapter. You also got to get your clearances, right, right. which is equivalent to educational clearances sure. that teachers have. Uh, and then you, once you join that chapter, you'll get contacted by the officers of that chapter, and they'll let you know when the when the meetings will start. So it's that easy. You just it's, go to piaa.org, look under officials, and if anybody wants to be an official, they really need some help. You know, a lot of the guys that when we played Chad are getting older now. It's no secret. Correct. So they need some younger guys, and we're kind of middle of the road now. We're not even the younger guys anymore, but the younger guys in their 20s and 30s, you know, just getting out of high or uh, college in their 20s, you know, it, it's a good way to make some extra money and, and a good way to give back to the game that gave so many people so many opportunities. Absolutely, and one thing is, you'll be, you know, when you when you become an official, you'll start in the subpar city level, 
you know, freshman, junior high, JV. You won't, they won't toss you right into the fire with Bar City right away. And you just work at it. You try to find a mentor to help you through, work on things, and uh, you move forward. And as you get better and you grow with the game, and then you, you work into the Bar City level. So, 10 years ago, your first game, where was it? My first game, believe it or not, was um, uh, it was at MMI, junior high. Okay. And it was against McAdoo. And I remember it well because Kevin Yurcannon was the coach of McAdoo. Oh, boy. And he He's was, a Dolphins fan, so. Well, that's <laughs> okay. And, uh, but he, he was also an official. And people worry about fans and, and players and coaches. My challenge is how, what my officials, my fellow peers, officials, feel about me officiating. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and, and doing that game, it, it was tough. You know, and you know, and as you do more, you get better, you get comfortable. You know, you, I do stand in the mirror at home, work on my mechanics, see what I look like. I don't put on the uniform, but just to, just to see what I look like, and and do I have a presence to be on the floor, and to letting my partners know what I'm calling, where the throw-ins are going to be, things like that. If it's a floor foul or it's a shooting foul, things like that. Or well, birds of a feather. So I mean, I can relate to everything you do because. Yep. It's sad. After every game that we call, I listen to it on the way home, and I constantly criticize myself. Absolutely. But that's 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 a good thing sometimes. Sometimes it's going to be a bad thing. But, hey, you want to get better. Absolutely. Okay, now, you said about mentors. They assign you a mentor. Well, they don't really assign well, it, but you, you just... Who's your mentor? Who was your mentor? That mentor I, well, you know, I, I will say the Greater Hazleton Chapter PIAA, they're my mentors. Um, those the gentlemen and, and ladies that are going to you my gotta chapter. you got to give me one name. I'm not letting you off the hook that easy. Um, well, I and Midge I, don't count. Okay. Uh, well, I don't want to single anybody out because what I do is I I, I, I kind of cherry pick what they have and I kind of blend it into my own. Right. Right. You know no, what I, that's understandable. You know what I mean. So it's I, I just and I ask I know and I I call and ask some you know conversations things like that you know so it's uh, you know and you're constantly you're kind of critiquing yourself. So. What got you interested in becoming an official? I'm, I'm assuming you played the game in yeah. high school. Well, I well I played football. I I, I got into basketball uh, and I did baseball too. And that's a great baseball. Basketball was my first that I uh, became an official for, but it was because of questionable officiating. My, I have two kids that played, and it the game that kind of spearheaded it was it wasn't really a, a foul or anything like that. It was really an out of bounds call. It was clearly on the other team, and and I couldn't believe it, you know. And, and but it was just something I saw, and, and you know, I, and, and it's not easy officiating. So I wasn't mad at him, you know. I just, hey, you want to make changes, get involved, and that's exactly what I did. And you know, I spent over twenty years on the sidelines on the fall. Yep. And I can tell you, as any any coach in any sport will tell you, we knew who the good officials were. We knew who the officials were that took time to do what you just mentioned earlier to practice to have their ducks in a row yep. to know ahead of you know hey mike jenks is having a great year or aj fry just former players of mine Correct. is doing this or that and we notice you run the wing t and you shift and move a lot right that always gave me great comfort as a coach if i may just because i knew that those officials had done their homework ahead of time. Absolutely. And, and it's a lot of work. It and is. It, it is. And it makes a great difference, I believe, not only to the coaches, but also the kids recognize very quickly if it's a good crew or not because they're not dumb. Right. And, and, you, and you look for consistency. You know, what you call in the first quarter, you know, you want to call that throughout the game. Is it being called both ways? You know, you just want to be consistent. That's the bottom line with officiating. Coach, just, ju- just to back up one second, I heard you say jinx. Can you call him on the counter and give? Yeah, that's who ran the counter. That's give what I figured. That's a joke between me and I, Coach. I, 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 hey, listen, Chad, you and I played enough years of softball together. Correct, a okay. lot, yes. I'm going to tell the story. Okay. Okay. Down in Barnesville, Coach. I know exactly Not a good at. game. It was 1-1. It was the bottom of the seventh inning. Obert stepped to the plate. He had to take the mud off his shoes because the mud was how deep? Oh, it was like ankle deep. Yeah, it was. It was, it was really bad, even though it was like 90 degrees. We're going to make the story good. He wound up. He delivered a 2-2. The lefty swung long fly ball deep to right field on his horse at the track. You can kiss that baby goodbye. The game-winning home run right there. Yep. Chad Obert to propel us to the next round. 
and and then and I had to leave it on his answer machine. Yes, that night. yeah, we didn't have cell phones <laughs> back then, so we had to. And I don't have, wish I had the tape, but the 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 top that, that with that story is the gentleman that was ahead of me was Danny Enchek. Yep. And I said, Danny, and this is true. I mean, but you joke, Danny, you get on base, I'll win it. And he, that's a true story. And it was just because you're your kid, you're you know in her twenties, joking around, and it was it was funny. But you were money. Well, I, well, you know, I either hit a home run or I fouled out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he was all or nothing, like, yeah. like uh, Dave Kingman. Yeah, I was all or nothing. <laughs> that was great. Chad, thanks for coming up. I know you've got the next game. Rich got one more for you. Well, I was just going to say with the playoffs coming up now, you know, you mentioned earlier consistency is a big thing. Right. And Paul mentions it a lot. We'll talk about it on the air. Mm-hmm. Whatever the way the game is going to be called, as long as it's called the same way, the entire game you appreciate it as a coach sure in lieu of what happened last night you know people are saying oh that call shouldn't have been that in that situation etc you guys as a crew talk about any of that you do you do do you, or do you give a little bit more if you if you can even answer it uh, are things a little bit different i mean now when the playoffs start so like you kind of you know you kind of mumble around a little bit, you know. You don't want to be a, a critic because sometimes situations are, you know, they're, you know, different the way they develop into what they are, and you know, you just, you just want to constantly try to get better, you know, and, and try to prevent things from happening, you know, or you know, think, you know, you just don't want to, you just don't, you just want to try and be there for everybody, try to help them, you know what I mean? I just don't, you know, so. So how do you handle the coach that's on you and on you and on you? You seem like a pretty level-headed guy. I, I I would just off the and I just met you right. in person Correct. at the beginning of this interview, but that would be safe to say I don't see you as being a quick tear up. I I I've done it. I've tossed fans. I've tossed coaches. I, my 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 line is I'll take I'll take it to wherever the coach or the fan or the player wants to go. Yep, that's the best way I can describe it. Tell I'm, them your speech before the game, Chad. Will you tell the kids? That's well, very important. Well, and, and I have a de-escalator. You know, you want to de-escalate situations. But one of my lines, and I've learned from one of the senior official, and I just picked it up this year. You like this, Rich? This is a line that I've. Your conduct on the court, or the football field, or the diamond, or field hockey should be the same as your conduct in the classroom absolutely you know this we That's talk about it fully here yep athletics is an extension of curriculum it's curriculum you're guaranteed athletics you're not I, you know i i'm very fortunate i did serve on a school board right yeah and you know in athletics is a part of education teamwork lead by example leadership you know so Yes, it's um, that that's that's the line that you know that we, we we use. You know, it's your your floor presence is the same as it should be in the classroom. In my place. sister with a, a cameo appearance up here. Okay, remember my sister Joelle? I, I do not. I no, know your two was, brothers. Your other brothers. I brother. have more than that. I have there's four, there's five of us, Chad. Come on, I like the Olberts, million and them. All right, Chad. Thanks. So do you know your schedule yet coming up? Well, where, where are you going to be, or so will they assign that it's later? It's a great, great question. It's another thing with playoffs and things like that. Getting state letters, uh, you have to go to a convention, which is in Harrisburg. But the last, uh, I, I did one on the Zoom during COVID, so I do qualify. Um, however, there is a meeting coming up on February 19th at Piston Area High School. Uh, if you choose to want to do playoffs, you can attend that meeting, and then you know you sign in, and, the, and they recognize that you are. And some guys go and some guys opt out, you know. But you just have to qualify by going to the convention in, in that meeting. So. Well, if you choose to do them, which yeah. I would guess you are, yep. good luck and, yeah. and have have a good round. I appreciate I appreciate you having me. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not a common or often that you get an official to talk on the radio. It's about the kids. Well, and, it's an and important part of the game. It is, and you get the students, which is fantastic that they're on the radio with you or on YouTube. You know, and, let me tell you what kind of good kids Hazen area has. Luke Gennaro and the other, I don't know who else the other kid was that killed him. They're bringing his pizza up here, Coach, and, and soda that they just said. What a good bunch of kids. Chad, thanks for having you here. I'm glad you came on. Well, I'm glad I ran into you yesterday at Dunkin' Donuts, so we scheduled our guest. Absolutely. It was just a coincidence. and you know, you know. We talked for about 40 minutes. My wife said, I thought you went for gas. I said, I did. I made a pit stop. You made a pit stop to talk to your high school buddy. All right, let's get you out of here. We don't want to get too much. I know. I got to go ready. I, I do have the second game. Who's with you? 
Uh, oh, Basic, right? Chris Basic yep. and Georgie Lapuka. Oh, you got a good group. Yeah, yep. He, Kirby, we call Kirby. Georgie Lapuka yep. Kirby. So yep. the three of us. I know Georgie a long time. Yes. All right, well, nice to meet you, and have a great game. Thank you. All right, buddy. Good seeing you. Take care. Chad Obert, one of my old-time friends. Look at these guys bringing pizza, Coach. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to have a slice of pizza. We'll be back. to Hazel area good game 13 13 we had halftime guests and galore and we will for the next game too what a, what a fantastic night this is here I got my sister here Joelle I got Chad my brother-in-law down there we got Chad Olbert up here Damien's up here we got Sarge coming up at halftime the next game holy family coach I just keep me just and we got the Hazel kids that brought us pizza and everything yeah fantastic what a great group of kids very much appreciative. Thanks, thanks, guys. And that was Chris Catrone, Luke Gennaro, and Santos brought it up. And here we go. West Hazleton going from right to left. Nunez inside to the big fella. Nice give and go. Down low. Yeah, well done. Winner well Rivera done. puts in two. Here comes Harmon. Harmon looking off the screen. Picks up his dribble. Ball held high above his head. Ball over to Spazano, throws it away into the hands of Santos. Santos. And now back to Nunez. West Hazleton looking to run a little bit. In the hands of Asoria. He had a nice first half off the bench, and he gets the start in the second half. Nunez, the hook shot out of George Gervin. George Gervin? Yeah, we're going way back. Pulling out the Iceman stuff here for the Spurs. Off the back of the teacup. On the breakout, Harity puts it on his hip, lays it up and in. Yeah, he got a little bit cute there with the ball. He almost, almost traveled. Almost. Give Logan nine. Game high. Yes, he's leading the Eagles in scoring. Santos, nice bounce pass to Rivera. Rivera in with the trees there, tries to throw it off Harmon's leg. Harmon comes down with the loose ball. Up ahead to Harity. Good block there by oh, Amaya's a got him. They're going to go to foul and... He got Herity's, his money's worth. No, Herity's limping. That's not a good sign there. Could have rolled his ankle there, and you never want to see anybody hurt. And Logan's been absolutely dynamite tonight. Yeah, I think. I don't know, Paul. I, I don't want to speculate, but it might be a little higher. It might be his left knees. Is he holding his? Uh, yeah. He left. was a little bit, but he's trying to stretch it out. Could be a cramp, but I don't think so. He's really having a hard time putting pressure on that leg. He'll go to the line to shoot two in this tie ball game with 4.43 to go. Six-minute quarters here in middle school basketball. And Logan steps up to the line. First one up is off the back of the iron, no good. Valley not shooting very well from the free throw line. One, one, for, for, one for eight, says our stat man. Breath, young man, second one on its way is good. Much better the second time. And over to the point guard, Nunez. Valley leads 16 to 15. Long cross court pass. Rivera runs it down. 
In and ahead's a ball eye. He's going to lay it up and in, and he's fouled. Yeah, and he's got a chance for another three-point play, so. You're starting to see the quickness of Valley take over here in the third quarter. They're getting some fast break points, and they're getting back. They're taking away those passing lanes. They're forcing the issue. Ball A, two points on the evening. And that's no good. Into the hands of Rivera. Rivera lost it. And they're going to call a jump ball. They're going to call travel on Eckert. And the Wildcats will. Really. And Wes what? Hazleton's going to call a timeout here as they started off on a 5-2 run here. 30-second timeout. We'll stay right here, Coach. Yep. And people are still filing into the gymnasium here. Yeah, this is... Are you surprised how many people are here? No, when you told me it was a middle school thing, and then you told me, that's why I'm not surprised. You said, I don't think you've called me by my first name since you met me. So no. you said, Coach. I don't even know your first name. You said, Coach, when you get here is tonight. Gary? Gary? When you get here tonight, it'll be a big crowd. You'll be surprised, you said, and and it is a big crowd, and, this, and that's this good crowd to see. It rivals the high school games, Coach. I'm telling you. I'm... I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I think this is bigger than any high school game we've we've had. It might be Dallas, Dallas, and uh, because both sides are filled. Yep, you know, getting filled. Should I say? Nunez, here comes the trap. Over to Santos. Santos gonna thought he would take it across, but he didn't. Into the hands of Crosby. a long tray from the corner. It's wow, got it. nothing but. Asoria yeah. puts it right down the rabbit hole, Coach. Yeah, and that's a definite three. Asoria's having a wonderful evening tonight. Goes for the steal. And in the hands of Esposito. We are deadlocked here at 18. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. Harmon, he's going to spot up for three. And he's he got it. Boy, you love to see it, don't you? Back and forth. Back and forth they go, like I said, like a prize fighter. Osorio behind his back, little shake and bake. Back out to Nunez. Nunez now, left wing extended, top of the key. Gives it back out to Rivera. Rivera drives, puts it on his hip. Can't get it to fall. Ball batted around into the hands of Santos. Santos just fights for it. Gets it, kicks it back out to Nunez. 3.24 to go, clock moving. Long three again off the rim, no good. Here comes a layup again, Coach. Harry lays it up and in. Yeah, he appears to be okay now. Boy, he loves to cradle that ball next to his chest, doesn't he, when he goes up? Biggest lead of the game for Valley. Up five. Soria for three around the rim and out. And the ball. And it has a ball. And now back over to Harmon. Harmon dribbling through defenders. 2.54 to go in the third quarter. And Valley's going to call a timeout to settle it down. Probably a good timeout, Coach. Yeah, even though they're up five, they have a chance to go up seven or more here. So, hey, Coach wanted to get things in order a little bit. Yep, we'll see if Christian has some stats for us on this timeout. And he does. One second, all right. Valley with a ten-point quarter so far. West Hazleton is 6 for 21 for the field, 17 turnovers, 1 for 6 from behind the arc, and they have how many? 16 rebounds for Valley, 8 for 23 for the field, 11 turnovers, 2 for 4 from behind the arc, and 9 rebounds. Good job, Christian. And that's where we have to score 23 to 18, a 5-point lead. Valley with the ball, and West Hazleton needs a stop here. West Hazleton's been good coach in the half court game. They it's have. the transition that's been killing them. Well, you said earlier it's going to be quickness versus height. Yeah, the guards for Valley are dynamite. Gleam with the ball, picks it up. Over to Casio. Travel. And West Hazleton looks to be coming a little unglued here, coach. Yeah, they're. I think playing a little bit too fast for themselves at the moment. They got to settle it down, weather the storm. 2.24 to go in a rapid moving third quarter. Harmon right down the middle. Can't get it to fall. 
And a rebound by Ocasio. Long pass up ahead to Nunez. They got numbers. Two on one break. That's Rivera. Dribbled it off his foot. And a nice defense by Harrity. Rivera with the ball. Now back to long three again. He's got it again. Yeah, he's certainly not shy, is he? Asoria two for four from behind New York. Give him ten points. And they needed that basket. Two-point ball game. 23-21, 131 to go. Harrity picks up his dribble. Chest high over to Balle. Back over to Harmon. Harmon top of the key. Puts the ball in the court. Little crossover. Harmon gives nice pass. And he'll go to the line, which will be Eckerd to shoot two. I like to see Harmon finish on that. When he dished it off, he might have had a clear path right to the basket. He did, but either way, I mean, the pass certainly got the effect that he desired. And the guard play just as good as advertised here for the Valley Eagles. Mason Eckerd at the line to shoot a pair. And first one is no good. A little bit of pressure now. Second one is good. And ball squirts out. Kind of like a rugby scrum there, coach. No surprise, Nunez has come up with it briefly. In the hands of a Ponyik. Harity all alone by himself again, lays it up and in. West Haven has got to get back on defense. Well, I think the quickness has really shown itself here in the third quarter. Asoria. For sure. Swings it over to Nunez. Nunez, nice move, mid range jumper, can't get it to fall. Numbers. Yep. West Hazel will run, 38 seconds to go. Santos gets the rebound. He'll go to the line to shoot two. I got to tell you, Paul, he was right off Santos's left there. He ran the floor, or excuse me, he was right off Nunez's left side. He ran the floor for a big hit. That was impressive to see, and he was able to clean up the miss, and now he's standing on the foul line. 30, Great hustle. Yeah, 31 seconds to go. Big free throws coming up here for Santos in the third quarter. As Valley has put up 13 points here in this quarter. First one on the way, first one good. When you get the feeling a little bit that, that Valley should be up a little bit more than four points here. I, mean, I think for to West Hazleton to weather this storm, if they can get down by three points here going into the fourth quarter. And he can't get the fall. Ball batted around, and it's going to be Valley ball. Excuse me, West Hazelton ball. As it's off an eagle with 28 seconds to go. Here's a big turnaround, Coach. Correct. Trying to get the ball to Santos, and they do. Santos backs his way in, turns around. Takes it right off of Ponick and gets it up and in. There's that height advantage again. Just literally took the ball right away from him. Gives Santos nine on the ball game. That's partially blocked as Mazzano's Aponic with the ball. Eight seconds to go. Back out to Harmon. Being guarded by Santos. Harmon for three. No good. Rebound Aponic at nope. the horn and... We will go to the floor, 26-24. What a ball game we have here from Hazleton area. We'll be back.
welcome back to Hazel area. 26-24 Valley. Valley 9 for 27 from the field. 2 for 6 from behind the arc. They've turned it over 12 times. They have 12 rebounds for West Hazleton. 24 points on 7 for 25 from the field. 2 for 7 from behind the arc. 20 turnovers, but 21 rebounds, Coach. That size paying dividends. Absolutely. Santos in particular is having his way under the basket. Six minutes to settle it all to see who's going to go to the championship game Thursday night. And that is short by Harmon. Harry for three. Looks good around the rim. That popped out there like a whack-a-mole there, Coach. It did. In the hands of Esposo, now swings it back on the block. Turnaround jumper is no good Another by Eckert. For Santos, Paul. And West Hazel looking to tie. Oh, threw it away. Is a Cusio. Yeah, a little bit of a miscommunication between him and Landon Gleam. And turnover number 22 for the Wildcats. That's a lot. That's a lot to only be trailing by two points. Yep. Harmon drives, throws it up. Can't get the fall. Three Wildcats fighting for the ball. You want to cue it, Coach? Not yet. Santos behind his back. <laughs> Into the corner. Three ball on the way. That's a long-range three. Nuno. Oh, and Nuno's the shortest kid on the floor. Gets the rebound and the put-in. Sanitation work for Yaniel Nunez. We are deadlocked at 26. Five minutes to go. Harmon. Parody drives. Count it. Count it. And they're going to give him the continuation. Oh, I and think they are. Yep. Logan having a ball game. Give him 16, coach. Wow. Five minutes, four seconds to go. Valley by two. Another missed free throw for the Eagles. Guess who with the rebound? Christian, what do we got for free throws? Three for 10. Three for 13, Paul. Nice take by Reyes up and in. We're tied again. 444. What a ball game here, Coach, to tip off the playoffs. How about it? Harmon. Into his Esposito, kicks it back on Harmon, gets his legs into the three, and it's going to be West Hazelton ball. You know what else I like about it? No John, no yapping, nope. no nonsense. Both teams are playing extremely hard. Here comes that press. West Hazelton breaks it. Can't get the fall, and they're going to get... Over the back there. I wasn't sure who that was on, Coach. Asoria. Four team fouls for West Hazleton. Two for Valley. Possession arrow favors the Wildcats with 4.18 to go in the fourth quarter. Harmon. Spin move right to the rack up. Can't get it to fall. Missed the bunny there. Into the hands of Nunoz. Good opportunity there for Jaden Harmon. Osorio behind his back. Long cross court pass, and they had an easy layup, coach. A it little did. too much mustard. A little bit too much mustard. Reyes couldn't come up with it. Right idea. I'll tell you what, this wouldn't be a bad t time for either team to call a timeout and settle things down. We're under four minutes to go. It's getting a little sloppy out right, there. Speaking of that, West, West Hazleton has four. Valley with three remaining. Off the screen. Harmon being guarded by Santos. Puts the ball. Picks up his dribble. Over to Harry. He's done the damage tonight, and he'll go to the line again. David Reyes with the hack. And Harry to the line. It's good to see he's recovered earlier on. Seemed to have a lower body issue, potentially a knee or an ankle, but he's back to normal. 
He'll be shooting two. First one up, high arcing is good. 29-28 Valley. And I'll tell you what, Coach, no matter which way this game goes, these are two evenly matched teams, as you can see by their records. Uh, yeah, evenly matched and different at the same time, yeah. yep. which is good to see. There's going to be a lane violation there, and that's going to be West Hazleton ball. Maybe some pressure here from the Eagles. Yeah, they've been trying to trap here, but it hasn't really worked. Let's take it. Well, there's, there's the first turnover there off the parity. Santos brings it up and in. There you go. Points off the pressure. Give Harry 19. And another turnover. And then right back. A lot of reaching and grabbing here. 3.06 to go. Nobody home as they pass it to the middle and it has the ball. Away. Harmon. Throws it in reverse, up and in. Hey, he went across the basket and put it back. We're going to get a timeout now by West Hazleton, I believe. Yep, good timeout. Full timeout. Let's take a break. 2.53 to go. Valley up by five. We are back here. Two minutes, 53 seconds to go. Oh, yeah, coach. I hear the baby shark is on the... I'm surrounded. Where's my sister down there? Chris, you get Joel to do the shark. Well, West Hazleton finds themselves down five. Three timeouts left to go. Big possession. Yep, they need some points. Oh, Harity over to swat yeah, that. Yeah, it's gonna be tipped. Harity's having himself a ball game, 19 points. Or the young man. Who's on the inbound? Over to Rivera. Back out to Nunez. Trying to get it inside. They got to back it back out. Jumper for the paint, no good. Santos tries to get the rebound. Ball batted around into the hands of Valley again. Esposito comes down with the rebound. In the hands of Harmon. Harmon, right-handed dribble now over to the left hand. Two minutes and nine seconds to go. Valley going to play a little bit of keep away here. Run some clock, but poked away. And Valley's going to call a timeout. Good timeout. Yeah, Zach didn't like what he saw there. Coach called a timeout. Two minutes, one second to go. Five-point lead. Possession arrow in the favor of the Wildcats. They're going to take a full timeout, I believe, Coach, right? I think yep, it is. Full timeout. So, I think here you gotta you got to play them straight up. Go for the steal. There's there's no... Re well, I mean, if they have to foul, they can foul, but there's a lot of time left. There is. Two possession game. So you don't need to panic and start fouling right yet if you're West Hazleton, obviously. And then obviously if you're Valley, you want to try and spread the floor as much as you can. Use your quickness, see if you can get a direct dribble drive for a layup. Well, the way the scoring's been in this game, two possessions is a big is a big lead. Correct. So if I was Valley, I would keep the ball until I got a really good shot. If I get a layup, I'll take the layup. I'll keep it in the hands of Harmon and Harity who got me here. And then of course, if you're West Hazelton, 
I think you might be working on getting some screens for Osoria to get a couple of threes off here as he's had his share of. Yeah, he's been two for four from behind the arc at Harmon now. Going to walk it. Crosses over. Right to the basket. Gets it to fall. Right off the dribble. Drive as we said. Use their quickness. Seven point lead. Santos. Running the floor. Nice pass. Up and in. Oh, a wonderful pass from to the Rivera. He runs the floor well. Rivera's had a nice ball game himself. One twenty-eight to go. Back out to Harity. 35-30. Valley's going to have to foul here soon. Oh, and he dribbled it off his leg. Just what That's going to be a want. turnover. Yep. Timeout. We got him. You might as well use him. Correct. No, no time. Well, you got time or no? Yeah. No West Hazel, let me call it. 119 to go here. 35 to 30. Now they should have two left. Yep. They just updated it. So it's a full one. So as you said, to start tonight off here, crowd's still filing in. It'll be interesting to see who stays or if, you know, if everybody stays to watch the nightcap here. But what a way to start the tournament off. Wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to play in the big gymnasium and to fill a gymnasium, that's a credit to both schools. And they're all four schools tonight. And tomorrow night with the girls, it'll be the same way. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see some of these players mature over the next couple of years yeah. as well, wherever they may end up. Hopefully, like you said, they'll become Cougars. Yep. And we are set. It's going to be Valley ball, or excuse me, West Hazleton ball. Wrecked off the turnover. And they're going to go with that 3-2 press, or 3-1-1. They have two people way back to prevent the home run ball. And Nunez, and here it comes. Santos easily walks it up the court. 116 to go. Oh boy, nice move. Hangs in the air. Can't get it to fall. Jump ball, and it's going to be Wes Hazel's ball. Oh, the dribble skills for a youngster that size at that age are impressive. Yeah, remember that name, Justin Santos. And we're going to get another jump ball, and it's going to be Valley ball. Ballage going to inbound. Over to Harmon. Harmon being guarded by Rivera. No call as they're trying to foul. Harity backs it out. We're under a minute to play. Smart move by Logan. They don't need the points. Jumper is good. But you know Esposito. What? Esposito says, we'll take him anyway. Seven point lead. That might have did it, coach. I agree. Nunez behind his back. Nunez weaving. Three pointer on the way. High off the back iron. Rebound by Valley. Harmon up ahead to Harity. Tries to run it down, right in the hands of Harmon. And 22 seconds to go and a seven point lead. And Valley is 22 seconds away from punching their ticket into Thursday's final, coach. And barring a semi-miracle here by the Wildcats. The Eagles are gonna move to 16 and three and they're gonna be playing for the championship yep. on Thursday. Had the ball eye and he is fouled and no baskets no, no. this pitch. Good call. No continuation there. So I think what you saw the second half, I think you saw Valley's speed take over and their quickness take over. A lot of fast breaks. A lot of two-on-ones, a lot of baskets off the dribble. Logan Harrity's had a tremendous evening. Oh, 
Harmon's going to go to the line. Shooting one and one. Nineteen point nine seconds to go. Officials in discussion. And I think West Hazleton's going to, as you would say, have a total line change. Coach getting, letting everybody pretty much have a chance to get on the floor and play a little bit. It, if there was a technical, I, did you see it? I did not. Did you see the technical foul? Okay, we're sort of asking around up here. No one seems to have seen. Unless he called an intentional foul. Yeah, what took place, he may have. Yeah, and it's their ball. 19 seconds to go, and Guerrero Colon into the ball game, Surreal into the ball game, trying to give some shout outs here. Matt uh, Avilas into the ball game. Ansel Torres is in. Yep. Trying to give everybody some credit here who's into the game. And they're going to probably dribble this out, it looks like. And also Tavares into the ball game, coach. And there's your final score. Valley wins it 38 to 30. Behind 19 points by Logan Harity. Jaden Harmon has 10. We highlighted them in the open, Coach. We said the guard play on Valley is their strong point. 29 of the 38 points came from the backcourt. There you go. And we're going to wrap it up from here, and then we will take a short break. We will have some warm-ups. We will come back with Freeland and the Heights Terrace Hawks. Coach, I mean, we're going to pick our player of the game. We might as well do that now. Um, for Valley, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to pick the obvious. I'm going with Logan Harity and 19 points, numerous fast breaks. His size was a problem for West Hazleton down low, and I'm going to give you West Hazleton. Justin Santos. We took the chalk. But I'll tell you what, Santos, what a bright future for that young man. No, I don't know. I agree with yours from Valley. Do you agree with mine from yeah, West Hazleton? Yeah, I'm, I'm good with the chalk. We're good with the chalk. But, I just um, think that the young man possesses a lot yes. of attributes besides yes. having the height that he has. Hey, and hats off to Valley because they weathered the storm and they, they, went to, they fought to the end and they ended up with the victory. And like I said, guard play. They got three really good guards there on their team, and that was the difference. And I give uh, Esposito had six. He plays a little guard, plays a little forward. So just three points, two by Balle and one by Eckert, a foul shot. And uh, let's go over our final stats here. Four Valley. 14 for 35 in the field, that's 40%. Two for nine from behind the arc. 17 turnovers, 19 rebounds. The rebounds really even it out for 38 points for West Hazleton. 10 for 30 from the field, 33%. Two for 10 from behind the arc. The big thing, coach, 27 turnovers. Wow. Wow, lots. 25 rebounds, though, most of them for Santos. All right, hey, we're going to take a break. The Whippets are warming up along with the Hawks in our nightcap here. We'll be back to Hazelton area.
Seriously, no, no, no. that's my reason. I can buy two right now. Because the kid's going to drown. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hazleton area, the nightcap. The Freeland Whippets, the number one seed at 16-2, and two, coming in against the Heights Ter Terrace Hawks. They are the number four seed. They had to do the yeoman's work, coach, should I say. They had to win a play-in game against the Eagles from Holy Family Academy. They did win that game 34-31, and they punched their ticket, as you say, to the big dance. We're going to have Holy Family coach uh, Sarge Cannon hopefully on at halftime here. He said he'd come up and talk to us about the league and just how it's just improved in leaps and bounds over the years. And You know, we talked about this the first game. And, you know, if you didn't join us, you know, this is a feeding ground for a lot of different schools in the area. We said, you know, most importantly, Hazel area here. But not only that, you have Marion Catholic, the Colts, Christian's alma mater, and MMI the Preppers. So we got some schools in the area, and you might even have some kids go up to Holy Redeemer. Who knows? Coach, but uh, we're just about set to get underway here, and Freeland, as you said, you saw them come on the court, and you said one word, Coach. Okay. Big. So now I got to come clean. When they came out on the court, you were finishing up the particulars for our first game. I was eating a piece of pizza. And I <laughs> thought on a first sight that Hazleton's varsity was going to come out and do a little exhibition or something in between games because they're the same colors the whippets are as the varsity I, I am flabbergasted I thought West Hazleton was big Freeland's much bigger than West Hazleton I believe across the board no yes wow all right we're going to turn it down to our public address announcer we have a veteran uh, referee crew tonight. We have Chris Basic, Kirby Laputka, and we have Chad Obert, who we had on the first game. And did you see who was right down in front of us? I did not. Who? Brianna Kennedy. Oh. And a couple of the girls waved up to say hello. We got a couple of the girls players down there. Sophia's down. Sophia knows Sophia? her way up here. Where is she? I'm going to... Isaiah Vargas. Byron Batista, number 11. And JJ Latigua. Cologne and Jose Lopez. And Coach Brian Casadas. Familiar name to me yep, for they some call reason. Him B Man and his son plays on the football team. And played very well. Corrado. Freddie Corrado. Number three is Curtis Casanova. What a name there, Curtis Casanova. That's on my own name. He was coach. number four. This is Chase Lloyd. Boy, I'll tell you what. Wearing number five, Eddie Macko. That's a familiar name as well. Yeah, we know that guy a little bit. And number 15 is Grayson Tehansky. And Grayson rounds out the The are coached by Chris. So now Eddie, Eddie Macko. And the officials for Eddie, tonight's game. Maybe the Chad, brother of Chad Diamond. Opert, Chris right. Basie, and George Laputka. And we are set to get underway. And jumping center for the Whippets is going to be Freddie Corrado. And for the Hawks, it's going to be Jose Lopez. And you got to love that name. But I have to ask you quick, what's a Whippet? It's a, it's a, uh, like a Greyhound. Wow. Don't put me on the spot like that, Coach. Look, you know, I know my history. You know everything. My Hazel history. And here we go. Freeland dressed in their home whites. And the Hawks in their maroon jerseys. Corrado right to the bucket, up and in. They waste no time right off the opening tip. And Freeland oh. likes to push the pace. You'll see that three-quarter court. They'll be picking them up.
And that's Cologne. Over to Batista. Back over to Vargas. Vargas taps the brakes. Here comes the double team and throws it away. He got himself down in no man's land and had nowhere to go with the ball. Now for West or for Heights Terrace, excuse me, they got to weather the storm. We talked about West Hazel weathering the storm. Heights has got to weather the storm. They're a scrappy bunch of kids, but they don't want to get in a shootout with Freeland. In the hands of Casanova. Casanova, Corrado cuts to the basket up and in. Yeah, that's four points for a young man right off the bat. Runs the floor well. Well, he's been playing since he was in diapers, coach. The kid can flat out play. Really good baseball player also. Nice backdoor cut up and in. Matigua with the basket. Into the hands of Corrado running the floor. Left-handed dribble up to the right hand. Now backs it out. Kicks it back out to Mako. He'll run the point. Mako, left hand, bounce pass, down low. Good block by Latigua there. But it comes down in the hands of Corrado. Corrado picks up his dribble. Whippets looking to reset. Mako's going to launch a high arcing three. No good. Rebound by Tehansky. Another nice block by Latigua. He's having a block party. And Corrado, there's three of them blocks in a roll by Heights Terrace, and it's going to be Heights ball. Good defensive series. Tremendous defensive series. Come up for some air there, big guy, I'll tell you. Romeo Brid Brito into the game. I'll tell you what, what a nice job they did here. They have all the, the young men's pictures up on the scoreboard, getting that college-like feel here in Hazel area tonight. And I'll guarantee you, Paul, these players had a rough day in school today because I'll guarantee you they weren't thinking about academics a whole lot. And rightfully so. Lopez turns it over. Casanova, the inbound. Up ahead to Mako. Mako taps the brakes. Puts his head down. Casanova picks up the ball. Bounce pass down low to Hansky. No good. Lloyd puts it back up and in. And inside, they are just having their way. They are dominating the boards early on. Although Heights had one nice defensive sequence yeah, there. Latiqua had a block party. Latiqua, left wing extended. Now kicks it back over to Lopez. Back three ball on the way is off the back iron. Into the hands of Corrado. Freddie gets it back over to Mako. He jogs it up the court. Left-handed dribble now over to the right hand. Across the timeline he goes. Over to Corrado. He's going to launch a three. That's short off the rim. And a rebound by Brito. And they're going to call a jump ball here. Good defense by Mako. And it's going to be Heights ball. But, Coach, what that does is it turns the possession arrow. Correct. Vargas. Now across the timeline. Left hand. Switches over to the right. Picks up his dribble. High pass. Inside to Lopez. Saved the way. Latigua has the ball. Turnaround jumper is good. J.J. Latigua. He's shaking his right hand there. He may have got it snuck, stubbed. And they threw it away. And it's going to be West Hate, or excuse me, Heights Terrace ball. Still stuck in the first game, Coach. That's all right. Six games here in three days. Four days, actually. A break on Wednesday. Into the corner of Latigua. Pass, bullet pass inside. As Lopez can't get it to fall. Here come the Whippets running the court. That's Mako. Right to the basket. Shuns off a defender. Lloyd and he'll go to the line to shoot two. As he's fouled by J.J. And I think they're going to get him with the body and the hands. Another first quarter game with lots of up and down action. Lloyd's first one is hard off the back. Substitution into the game, coach. That's going to be Yadio Urena. Casanova picks the rebound up and puts it back in. Ball, 
Vargas across the timeline, now crosses over. Drives to the basket, goes underneath. Can't get the fall into the hands of Mako. 2.29 to go in the first quarter. 8-4 Freeland. Long pass over to Corrado. Corrado crosses over. Jump stop, throws it up off the backboard, up and in. Give him six. And we're going to get a 30-second timeout by Heights. We're going to take a break here. Let's take a break, Coach. We'll be back. Welcome back, 10-4. Freddie Corrado leading the way for Freeland with six points. J.J. Latigua with four for Heights Terrace. Winner will play Valley Thursday night as the Eagles got a 38-30 hard-fought victory against West Hazleton. Nothing easy about that, Coach. No, not at all. Brittle's going to inbound. And he had Corrado with his first foul of the evening. Down low, Latigua. And there's going to be a push. That's going to be on Lloyd. Correct. Nice positioning for Lantigua as he will go to the line to see if he can add to his point total. JJ's going to shoot two. First one on its way is short. A substitution in the game, Coach, too. I didn't see who came in for Freeland. That is Nywin Wallace. Up ahead to Brito. He just taps the brakes. Well, he did a nice job letting Freddie go by him. Freddie was flying down the court. Had a block in his mind. 139 to go. Mako bounce pass into Lloyd. Lloyd on the block. And he is fouled. I think they're going to get Brito with the foul. You're going to see a lot of fouls, I think, this game, Coach. A lot of inside game here for both teams. And foul shots, like I said, we, we say it all the time. Foul shots could win or lose you a game. Any level? Any level, any time. Lloyd at the line, shooting a pair. First one up and rims out. Hey, Santana. Coming in for the Whippets. And the bank's open. Gets it to drop. 11-7, 134 to go. You avoid three points for Chase. Brogas. Good tie up by Mako. 127 to go in the first, and a substitution for Ram Heinz Terrace. Yeah, Romero into the game for Brito. Yep. He's going to have a seat. Anthony Romero. Heights substituting liberally here in the first quarter. Yep. Mako, turnaround jumper is short. Lloyd runs down the rebound. Casanova, floater in the lane. That popped in and out. And Latigua with the rebound. Up ahead. Baragas bounce pass down low. Casanova, good defense as he got back. Missed the shot, hustled all the way back down the court and got the turnover. Toronto crosses over, picks up his dribble. High pass over to Mako. Mako spins top of the key, weaves. Floater in the lane. Hits every part of the rim but goes in. Latigua runs it down but into the hands of Corrado. 
with 40 seconds to go, 11-7, Freeland leads. Corrado running to the basket, gets it to drop. They just don't have an answer for number one. No. Give them eight. For August, 22 seconds to go. Over to Latigma, picks up his dribble. Into the corner, head fake. 15 seconds to go. He's getting trapped in that corner. Tigma, ball back out to Lopez. Now over to Romero. And that goes off the foot of Veragas, and Freeland's going to have one more shot with six seconds to go, leading yeah. by six. Unforced error there for Isaiah Vargas. He's going to come out of the ball game. Plenty of time for the Whippets oh, to get another shot. Mako with six seconds. Jogs at five seconds. Three seconds, two seconds, pull up at the horn. Got it! Wow. At the buzzer it goes. Freeland 16, height seven. And that's a momentum builder into the second period. Let's take a break. We'll be back to Hazel area. Welcome back here to Hazel area. 16 to seven, end of the first quarter. For Heights, three of five from the field, 60%. 0 for one from three point range. They turned it over six times. They've had four rebounds. Four Freeland, six of 12, 50%. One for three from behind the arc. Only three turnovers, but seven rebounds for the Whippets. And they're up nine, coach. Yes, they are. Heights got to be careful here the first couple minutes. This thing could go sideways quick. Long tray, no good. Rebounded by Lloyd. Into the hands of Corrado. Long bullet pass to Casanova. Pass into Lloyd. Good defense by Latiqua. Here comes JJ. Ball on his hip. Good defense once again by Casanova. He's been all over the court. That's a two by Cologne. Big they gave him a three. Heights. They gave him a three. He was in front of the line, it looked like to me. Oh, I agree. We play on here. Mako runs down the loose ball out by the volleyball spike line there. Toronto cuts free, puts it on the floor. Mid-range jumper by... Centano, no good. Rebound by Cologne. And Cologne jogs it up the court. Heights only down six. Nice move, takes to the basket, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Well done. Daniel Cologne showing some moves out there. Tansky and set the chip back into the game for the Whippets. Again, you know, puts these two free throws in. It's only a four-point game. Yep. We always say first two minutes of every quarter is the most crucial. First one up, first one good by Daniel Colon. Santano having a seat. And Tahansky back into the ball game. Second one is good. Four point lead. Here comes Mako. Left hand up the court. Now switches over to the right. Crosses over. Mako weaving in traffic and. We're going to get him for a walk. Well, one referee called a foul under the basket. The official out here, Chris Basic, called a travel. And it's going to be a travel. Correct. It's going to stand.
4.37 to go. There's a turnover. Casanova lays it up and in. He did an excellent job of reading the passing lane, jumping that pass and taking it all the way coast to coast. Cologne over to Latique, but turnaround jumper at the, oh, nice shot. Oh, smooth as silk, Paul Bow. Lopez. Lopez. And that mid-range jumper at any level, we say it's a lost art. Casanova coast to coast. And it'll be a jump ball. There's something you don't see every day. And it'll stay here with Freeland. Tehansky will inbound. 18-14. Heights hanging in there. Grotto tries to throw it in reverse. Got himself too far under, but Floyd picks it up, lays it in. Right there, Paul, with the height. Riddle for three, no good. Antigua rebound, throws it up off the back of the tin into the hands of Corrado. Jogs it up the court. Latigua on his arm, running one-hander up and in. Give him 10. Correct. 3.18 to go in the half. Three-pointer, no good, missed everything, and here come the Whippets looking to run. Mako on the outlet. The Freeland's going to call a 30-second timeout. And I'm surprised that Freeland called it. 30 yep. second timeout. We'll keep it right here. Eight point Freeland lead. Well, Valley had it close, and then just like that, you see the firepower of the Whippets to be able to extend the lead very quickly to eight, possibly double digits here if they convert with this possession. Yeah, and the Heights, like I said, Heights has got to be careful. They've got to weather the storm. It's a game of runs. We saw it in the first game. And the longer you can hang around, like I said, Heights, 11 wins, seven, 12 wins, and 7 losses as they won the play-in game. But they're very formidable, and they got some athletes on their team. They can shoot the ball. Yes. Well, it appears to me that there's no shortage of athletic ability on the floor for either, no, either of these four teams tonight. And don't forget, be with us tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. we got the girls. Two games tomorrow night. Two games on Thursday. It's our version of March Madness in February here. Mako for three. That is short. Lloyd runs down the rebound over to Casanova. Casanova running one-hander. Can't get it to fall. Lloyd strong on the boards, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. And Freeland exercising their distinct height advantage under the boards. Well, I'll tell you what, Coach. I like the way Curtis Casanova plays. I like the way... Or, I'm sorry, not, I'm sorry, number four, Lloyd, that was. I like the way Chase Lloyd plays. I like the way he positions himself under the basket. He knows exactly where he is at all times on the court. Free throws, he's got to work out a little bit. He's The bank's open. But I'll tell you what, he's, he's got an all-around game. He's really, really good on the block. You know what? I am going to agree with you 100%. He seems to understand what his role is yes. and plays it very well. And on the other end, I did mention Casanova. Casanova looks like he can play any of the five positions on the court. He is really, really athletic. Oh, pass inside and gets him to go as Latigua. Bullet pass by Cologne. Latigua's having a fine game. Yeah. He's got seven points. He has two fouls, so he's going to have to be careful here. Yeah, he's, the, he's Heights' best player, it's obvious. I'm just going to say, I don't think they can afford to take him out of the game. No. Even with two fouls at the moment. He's um, got nice sneakers too, Coach. <laughs> I can see Christian in a pair of those green kicks. What do you think? Most likely. 23-17, <laughs> 228 to go. Casting over to inbound. Over to Santano. Up ahead to Mako. Mako has it on his hip. Long cross-court pass, and Tano squares up for three off the back of the tin. And almost a loose ball foul, and they're going to get a foul as 
It's going to be on. I'm going to call Mako for that. What do you think? I believe they are, and that's going to. I think they called Tahansky actually. Did they get him? Yep. They it's going to be on Tahansky. Yep. Each team still with some fouls to give. Freeland with one. Heights with three, I believe, to give, correct? Yep. See how these last two minutes of the half play out. Cologne over to Latiqua. Right into the hands of Vargas. Swings it cross court over to Cologne. Cologne right handed. Three ball on the way is short, and they're going to get. Latiqua over the back, and yeah. that might be that's going to be three yeah, on him, isn't gonna it? That's going to be three, and I think he he knows it. He's going to want that back. Yeah, we'll see if B-Man's going to take him out right he now. He has to. Yep, he has to. He's going to be replaced by Anthony Romero. Romero. Yeah. And he just threw his hands in the air. He said, what am I going to do? I have to take him out. 151. You can't get four fouls. Well, I think it's a case of him trying to do too much. Yep. And that wasn't a good foul right there. No. Wallace with the ball back to Corrado. Right wing extended. Picks up his dribble. Hands it over to Hansky. Back over to Freddie. 138 to go. Corrado. Right handed. Hands the ball off. Santano. Pull up. Jumper is good. Nice. Joel Santano knocks it down. Eight point lead again for Freeland. 123 to go. Once again, the whip is threatening to open up a double digit advantage. Turnaround jumper is short. Freeland looking to run. Santano on the run out. Good defense there by Arena as he just picked his pocket. Correct. Over to Vargas. Chest high. Back over to Lopez. Lopez drives and it's going to stay here. Casanova back into the ball game for Tehansky. Well, Paul, if your height's here, do you try and... I mean, there's, there's just under a minute left. I would run some clock. I really, really would. Cologne for three. He's got it. And just or I'll just shoot a three-pointer. <laughs> Daniel Cologne heating up. Just as I was going to... Just as you say that, he takes the three-point play. And then a walk, almost a turnover on the Whippets. That's his second three-pointer of the game. Paul, this is a five-point game. There have been three times this half that Freeland has threatened to legitimately, in my opinion, blow the game open yeah, with a double-digit lead. 13-9 quarter in favor of Heights right now. And over to Corrado. Corrado pull up. NBA range three is off the back iron. Santano. Squares up, no good. Mako, smallest kid on the court, gets the rebound. He's knocked down, no call. And we play on. For August, 27 seconds, and they're going to get outside. I think they're going to call Mako Wall on this, are they? Mako or Wallace? It's going to be one of the two, I think, Paul. I think it's going to be Wallace. I think it's Wallace also. It's going to be outside here with a 16 foul for Freeland with 26 seconds to go. And Lopez, or Urena, looking to inbound. Big block by Freddie. I'm sorry, that was Dela Cruz. I'm sorry, I had the wrong number on my score sheet. I apologize. 23 is Dela Cruz. Yeah. And I sure. called him Urena about four times. I my apologies to the family. And then the turnover back the other way. We're going to get a quick substitution for Heights. That's going to be Brito coming into the game. Sprints underneath to replace Dela Cruz. And Dela Cruz, some good minutes for the young man. 15 seconds to go, five point lead. Vargas lets the ball do the work. 13 seconds, see if they get it to Lopez. He's been hot. Jumper is short, two seconds, one, and there's your horn. And we are at the half. Freeland 25. Heights Terrace 20. Let's take a quick break. We got a halftime guest coming up. What a shock. And we'll be back. Hey, we prepare for these games, Coach.
right, hold on a second. We're getting a, te a text here from Colleen. Wants to pick her kid up at the game. She's asking me how much time's left. Coach. Paul. What, what's going on here with these people? I, I don't... Hey, no better guest we have at halftime. He is the head coach, longtime friend of mine, Sarge Cannon of Holy Family. You're good. like the coach that didn't get to the dance, but we, I know you're going to provide some good insight here. Well, that's what I said uh, this morning, Paul, when people said uh, I was going to be on here. I said, yep, uh, it's just like the college uh, coach that uh, doesn't uh, get to the uh, tournament and yet gets to get into the uh, TV booth. So uh, happy to be here with you guys tonight and uh, enjoying some good basketball Yeah, I so mean, far. you guys were close. And, and like we said off the air here, you guys beat Freeland, you beat Valley, you beat Heights. Yep. The only team you didn't beat was West Hazleton, but you guys had a great year. And, and, and just watching this league evolve over the last couple of years back from when my son Jonathan was on the team. It's night and day here now. I mean, what's, I, I can't believe, and Coach was even saying, the tremendous athletes that we're seeing. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we saw that uh, the other night when uh, Heights beat us. Uh, you know, we went out to an 11-2 uh, lead, and uh, they just didn't quit. I have to give them a lot of credit that they came back. They have athletes and, uh, you know, did enough to, uh, to beat us. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we missed the playoffs by one game this year and, and one game last year, too. So, uh, but I do remember those times when we were uh, watching Holy Family when, when your son Jonathan was playing. And Jonathan <laughs> scored that turnaround jumper from the elbow, and the crowd went wild. There's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. only two in a year, Coach. Yeah. Hey. And he, he drove Coach Kringy crazy. God bless Bill Kringy. He loved Jonathan. Jonathan loved playing, but he drove him nuts. <laughs> yeah, we sure uh, had a good time uh, watching those games back then. And I, I never thought I was going to be on the sidelines, uh, you know, uh, when we were watching those games, for sure. I remember saying to you, Sarge, someday you'll be out there. You said, I don't know. I don't know. But your son, you have to be, I mean, just thrilled coaching Jimmy. I know you coach him in baseball. And just to see him develop and I, I watched the box scores in the paper I mean we're all over the place but I could just see the, the fine young man he's developed into and he looks a lot like you when you were younger and reminds me a lot like you that good athletic ability well I appreciate that and yeah it, it can be a challenge when you uh, coach your son but uh, he's a pretty good listener and uh, you know he, he wants to try and get better so that's good but uh, had a lot of good kids uh, on the team uh, you know this year and we had like 11 eighth graders so it was fun coaching a bunch of them as well you know and uh, um, you, you know like you said we had a pretty good year and, and that's good to see with a school like Holy Family with an enrollment of only 180 to 200 kids there's not a lot of kids in there and and for a couple of years they didn't even have a team right you know the girls didn't, couldn't field the team and you know the boys were having a hard time field the team so it's good to see those guys, you know, playing and playing at the level they are. Because it's, I mean, anybody can go out there and play, but when you're competitive every single game, that's a credit to the kids. That's a credit to the coaching staff. I know you guys put long hours in, and, and, and the program's really turned around. Well, yeah, you know, we do. And uh, I certainly, uh, when, when Co uh, Mr. Kostick asked me to be an assistant coach last year, uh, I jumped at the opportunity. And, yeah, it's long hours, but, you know, when you see the kids grow as basketball players and as young men, sure. uh, you know, that uh, certainly a credit, you know. Yeah, and, Coach, you've coached since the diving horse was a pony, and you know, and you say it all the time, all his, uh, his players, when I go to games, it's like walking into the Vatican with the Pope. They all love him. Right. So he won't, he's, he's very uh, shy about that, but he, does, he did a great job and coached for years, and, and that has to be such a great reward to go back and see that. Yeah, I remember. So, we got Valley in the championship game. Coach, I'll let you want a question? God, I'm sorry. I, I do. I, I'm, I'm curious because, um, and thank you, by the way, Paul. I, I, I really appreciate that. Checks in the mail. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of the things I used to say to parents, our feeder system, and I was at a fairly small school, South Williamsport, for many, many years. Our feeder system, I used to say, kids don't get scholarships in 7th and 8th grade. Well, that landscape has certainly changed now. Yep. So my question to you is, has that, have you seen an effect with the kids in that area where maybe they think they're going to get a scholarship, they, they think they don't have to pay attention to fundamentals, and the building blocks that used to be at this level for kids to move on when they get up to the varsity level... Have you seen a change there because of everything around them in the college? Well, well, certainly travel basketball and AAU basketball has made its way into the, this area now. Uh, my team uh, didn't have many uh, players that experienced that. 
So again, I was just trying to get them ready to go to wherever, wherever they're going to go play in ninth grade, whether that be at the high school, whether that be at Marion. But you are, you are right about that. It's out there. And uh, I, I think it has certainly trickled into uh, to some of these teams for sure. And then the latest, re do we have time for another one? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the latest of the athletes, when I coach it like coming and recruit it, the first thing I asked was, besides the grades and what type of character the young man had, are, are they an athlete? Are right. they able to do more than just one thing? So not to put you on the spot, but are you seeing more and more kids specializing? Um, you know, I don't see that as much. I mean, I know a lot of kids, uh, you know, are, are playing baseball year-round up here now, which they never did previously. But uh, there, there's some organizations that uh, do allow that and, and do encourage that. Um, but I am seeing kids, you know, still playing football, basketball, and, and I'm with you. I'm a big proponent of, you know, picking up uh, different baseballs and, you know, different balls throughout the year and, uh, you know, play some different sports for they sure. They only go through this once. Right. They'll only be in high school once. Right, right. So that leads me to the question, Sarge. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Valley in the championship game. You gave me a good scouting report. Excellent guard play for Valley. Yep. Size yep. is definitely an issue there. Sure. But I'll tell you what, the Harity underneath the boards, he, he played a really – Really strong game. He had 19 points. They're starting five, or the only no players from the bench scored for them at all. But the guard play was phenomenal. How do you think they match up against Freeland or against Heights? Well, um, I know uh, Freeland just beat Valley uh, the other night. That's how Freeland got the number one seed right. here. Um, and you're right. Uh, they're going to have a hard time with Freeland. All the six footers that they have certainly Boy, big, uh, big, big for yeah. When when they came out against us this year, I was like, oh boy. One one kid came out and he was he was bigger than the next. Uh, so uh, just down there with Pat Brogan, and he was saying the same thing, you know. So, uh, uh, but yeah, I think Valley has a good team. Um, you know, certainly with Harity, uh, he he can he he can you know make things happen on his with his defense. He's long. He's not afraid to get on the on the on the floor and uh, create turnovers and stuff like that. And Harmon smooth with the basketball yes. can drive to the uh, basket you saw them uh, late especially and Harity uh, got a bunch of uh, kickouts late yes. especially in the second half so very good athletes there and uh, you know they did enough inside uh, to keep uh, West Hazleton at bay and uh, like I said uh, you know there's some athletes on this Heights team too well, as, what, as what West to Hazleton earlier. Santos number 31 I mean yeah. from up here he looks like he's about 6'3 already yeah, in 7th 8th grade he's, he's a really good athlete he's a nice player and, and he had some other good uh, players too you know kept it close throughout so yeah, uh, um, yeah I mean I, I guess Freeland uh, probably would still be the favorite sure um, you know uh, they, they had the uh, best record in the uh, uh, regular season. Um, you guys beat them. Who else beat them? Uh, and Valley beat them once. Oh, Valley beat yeah. them once. Yep. Okay, Valley, so they yep. so That's their two losses. And, uh, you know, we got Valley, uh, like you said, and, and, and Freeland, and then I'm not sure who else Valley lost. They had three losses. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, I would say Freeland, uh, you know, certainly the favorite going in. But, uh, you know, they're going to have to get it done here tonight. Uh, they're only, only uh, up, up by five. So, well, uh, well, you know, they, Heights they, came back against us the other night. Uh, we were up early. They came back against us the other night. And, uh, they can shoot. They, they, can, they can play. Yep, yep. Uh, 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 J.J. Lantigua was a heck of an athlete. Yes. I understand he's a, uh, a foot, uh, football player, so we talked about that a little bit earlier. And certainly Cologne and Lopez, and uh, they have a couple players. So they're not out of this game by, by any stretch right yeah. now. And they got a heck of a coach. Uh, Brian Cassad is B-man. Yep. You know, yep. I, so, told, uh, I told coach, and you know, we saw Brian said playing football, and yeah. you know, it, it's yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, and he was such a good athlete. When Absolutely. Did he play with you? When you played? No, uh, Brian was two years, uh, two years younger than me. He's two years so, younger. and they had a phenomenal team well, you in look eighth grade. Than <laughs> they had a phenomenal team in eighth grade with B Man and, and Pat uh, Brogan and yep. Frank Fiola yep. and uh, I think Pletek and stuff like that. So that's going back a lot of years. But uh, you know, those guys, uh, those guys were able to get it done years ago. So, and B Man was a heck of an athlete over at yes. Michigan High yes, School. Yes, he was. Yeah. And, and Coach said also, just in closing here, when Freeland came out in the court. He thought it was Hazleton I'll warming up. I'll show you my note. <laughs> he <laughs> thought it was Hazleton yeah, varsity yeah. coming out warming up how tall they were. Absolutely. Absolutely. Paul was they're, doing they're, the points they're, they're from right. the last game and yeah. wrapping up. And I, you know, I don't want to, don't like to interrupt him, but I didn't. I, sure. And God's honest truth, 
I thought, because they came out from over there, I thought the varsity was going to come out and do a little okay. something in between games, and I was flabbergasted. Right, right. But you guys are obviously doing a tremendous job with these yes. kids because the technique and the skill level, it's not just kids running up and down the court. There's motion offenses, there's yeah. screens, there's dribble drives, there's pressing going on. So it is obvious that, that the coaches in this league are making an impression, and, and uh, congratulations yeah. on that, and keep up the good work. Well, yeah. when you look yeah. at the coaches in the league, too, you see people that played the game, too. That's a, that's another huge thing, especially up here in this area now. There's a lot of former players, even like with Hazleton, now with, with Brian Billig on the bench, you know I mean, helping them out there. We were teasing them last game. We had him up here for his interview. I was telling him how he used to box out with that pointy rear end <laughs> to get positioned there, but... You know, and it's definitely it's definitely a credit here. So we got 148 to go, Sarge. Yep. Thanks for coming hey. up. Always good Bally to see Bo. you. All right. All right. Thank you. Nice yep. meeting you. Nice meeting you. Thank you All very right. much. Guys, if have a good second if, half. If you're here right. on Thursday night, we'll have you up here again. All right. Sounds good. All right. You have an open invitation here. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank Sarge you. Cannon, Coach, Holy Family Academy, right. did a great job this year with the team. Just a Thanks, little Coach. bit short. Appreciate it. But he's always a good guy. Great to see him there. All right, Coach, we are back. It's you and I. We are. Boy, I'll tell you what. I, I have to, real quick, there hasn't been one person you've introduced me here to since I've been doing this that hasn't been top-notch, first-class, extremely friendly. So I do have to get that in. It's It's been a great experience, so I'm, I'm quite Just thankful. Just think of the Hazel celebrities you've met. You met the Duke, Midge, well, yeah. Chubby. Kind of makes me want to... Wish I coached here. Shout out to Chubby. He's on the clock again. He doing is. a great job tonight. No, now he, you're he, trying he to get on me, his good He sent me a threatening email <laughs> he on was, there. He was not happy earlier <laughs> when I went down. <laughs> I'm going to give him some gummy bears, though, Christian. You're going to run some gummy bears down to Chubby. Well, you're going to have to. You're going to have to do something. We'll have to come back with stats after the first whistle here. We're off the rails here. We are ready for the second half. Heights Terrace, the Hawks hanging in there behind Latiqua and Lopez and Colon doing a great job. Romero weaves now back out. Lopez for three is short. Excuse me, that was Colon. And in the hands of Baragas. Being guarded by Tehansky and now Mako. Freeland coming out in a 2-3 zone. Correct. See if they try to free the guards coach off a rebound there and look to get in a running game here. They're having a West Hazel, or uh, Heights is having a hard time. From the block, Latikma pulls it, short arms it into the hands of Lloyd and threw it away. Bragas, oh, oh, underhand nice. lays it up and in. Good job. Nice move. And you know, just talking to Coach here, uh, what a quality man he is. And, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times the middle school coaches go unappreciated. Yes. And they're really the ones that, that build the foundations for a lot of your programs. Yep. And Sarge is very modest there. He doesn't say too much there, but he was a fine athlete himself. He was a real good baseball player, a catcher. We don't really look now. Good. We got a two-point game. I think Christian wanted something with the... Uh, he has to write it down. Hand, hand it to our producer to give to me. I can't understand what he's saying. 25 23, 458 to go. Mako for three, spots up. A little hard. Rebound by Tehansky. Has it blocked, but they got a piece of the arm. And that is Lopez. Tehansky's going to go up to the line for a pair of free throws here early on in the third quarter with Paul Boat McGee and Gymnasium on this wonderful Monday evening for the first round of the middle school playoffs. Anthracite League, correct? Yes. And Christian wanted to tell me Heights is 5 of 6 from the line. So we talk about free throws. Freeland just missed another free throw. Tehansky to shoot a second one. And the second one is good. Three for eight for Freeland from the line. For August across the timeline. Right-handed dribble. Picks up his dribble. 
Hands it back up to Romero. Kansky with the steal. Up ahead to Corrado. Corrado jump stop in the lane. They're going to call a block there, and Freddie's going to go to line to yeah, shoot. Yeah, he is. That's... And I think Cologne got a knee right up above the chin area there. He did. He's wiping around there. He's a, he's a tough kid. He's all right. No blood will stay in the game. So one of the storylines here, I'm going to say for at least the rest of this quarter, is to keep an eye on Mr. Lantica with his foul situation. See if they go after him or not. First one up. First one is good. Tied for the lead with eight points for Heights, but does a lot of the little things. That I don't think they can afford to, to have him on the bench. No, no, absolutely not. Dorado leading the game high, 12 points. Over to Veragas, off the screen. He guarded by Tehansky, and he's bodying them. And Vargas is bodied. It's going to be a foul. And Heights will inbound from the side. Triggering the inbound will be Romero. I think Isaiah thought that was initially going to be called on him, but it was not. No. Romero throws it away. And in the hands of Casanova. Whippet's got a three on two break if they hurry. Kicks it back out to Corrado. Corrado spots up for three. No basket as we have a foul underneath. It's going to go the other way. I think this is going to be Offensive. on Tehansky. Let's see who it's on. It yep. is. That's going to be his third, I believe. A little too physical under the basket, Paul, Bo. And that's a big play because it wipes away a three-pointer. It does. And the lead still stays at five. And Brito's going to check back in for Heights. And Heights is scrappy. You know, they're, they're just like that, that fungus, man. It's just they won't go away. No, they will not. And you heard Coach talk about that at yeah. halftime. Holy family got up to an 11-2 lead, and they didn't back down. And there's a travel. And give credit to Freeland on the defense there. Yeah, multiple defenders around the ball quite quickly. We're going to get a timeout. And Coach Grisadis is not happy with what he sees, or was it Freeland that called it? I think... Heights called the timeout. I did not see it. We got a minute break. Let's take a quick break and we'll be back to Hazel Area. Welcome back here. 3.58 to go in the third quarter. 28-23. The Whippets lead. Corrado with 12 for Freeland. And McQueen. Leo with 8. And... Macko with the runner. Off Cologne, the mark. With, Cologne with 8 for Heights. Hansky's going to trigger the inbound. Long pass all the way back, and Mackel runs it down before it goes out of bounds. 3.45 to go, clock moving. Third quarter, Freeland by five. Tries to get into Hansky, denies him. Here comes Lopez. Lopez and a blocking foul on Mako. Yeah, Mako undercut him. But I, I think Eddie got himself out of position there. He did. Nothing, nothing belligerent or, or intentional. Just got himself in a bad spot. Well, I'll tell you what, nice job by Jose to, to identify that passing lane and do a good job. First one up, no good. And again, they have, they have, they have to. 
make their free throws. It's imperative. Second one is hard. Ball batted around into the hands of Corrado and hands it back off to Mako. Here come the Whippets across the timeline. Long pass to Casanova and a block. I think it's going to be number four on the arm. That's going to be Brito. Officials looking to make sure the number, and it is. That's his second. Passing over to shoot a pair. First one up, first one is good. Doesn't seem to be much of a flow to third quarter. Mm -mm. It, it, there's a lot of whistles, it's, it's, and I think that benefits Heights Terrace, to be honest with you. Correct. Freeland wants to get out and run, and they're not letting them. Second one rims out. Rebound by Latiqua. There comes Ragas. Well, Had it swatted away into yeah. the hands of Mako, and they're going to get him for a double dribble. He had the block by Lloyd, the outlet, and then I think Eddie wanted to go too quickly. But you're correct. These consistent breakups and stoppages of play are definitely benefiting Heights. Six-point lead, 3-11 to go in the third quarter. Ball Ball Rich Lonas, thanks for spending your Monday night here. Valentine's Day Eve, Coach, with the yeah. Sarah Hazel area. I'm going to get it... I'm going to get to spend Valentine's night. Oh, there you go. Latika up and in. He had to spend Valentine's Day with me. Jim Webb usually spends it every year with me at the P-Hack, but we're here this year. Casanova for three. No good. Rebound. Heights looking to run. Braga stops, taps the brakes. Latika up and in. Oh, there is another one there. Should see if Freeland calls a timeout, and they do, and they will not. They refuse to go away, Paul. Now 29-27, 30-second timeout, and this crowd is electric here. I was just going to say the contingent of Heights fans directly across from us were on their feet making quite a bit of noise. This has been awesome tonight, I have to tell you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal here, and like you said, the talent out there for both teams. Future is bright in the Hazel area. And not only just the players, but the whole atmosphere. You got the cheerleaders from all of the particular teams are out there doing their flips and everything else. And it's, again, good thing all the way around. Casanova inbound. Ball for the Whippets. A little bit of pressure from Heights. Over to Mako. Mako back over to, over to Corrado. Nice pass. And, oh, and they're going to get Freddie on a charge, but it was going to be intercepted anyway by Cologne, who had read, gotten back in time. Don't look now, Paul. But Heights has a chance to tie or take the lead. I didn't like that charge call. The one before I thought was a charge. I didn't think that one was. But we play on. We're even. <laughs> That might be the first play on of the evening. Yeah, it's been very, two very well officiated games. Agreed. Into the hands of Corrado, over to Mako. Back out to Freddie. Right handed dribble now switches over to the left hand. Right wing extended, over to Mako, top of the key, fights off a screen, drives to the basket, floater in the lane, no good. Ball tipped around into the hands of Lloyd. Lloyd up strong, but it can't get it to fall. Ball still, and there is Rogas on the breakout. Oh, a little hard, missed the bunny. Lopez can't get it to fall, Cologne can't get it to fall, and it's going to be Freeland ball. Well, Heights had their chances there twice. De La Cruz into the ball game now for the Hawks. For Brito. Casanova inbounding the ball for the Whippets. With a 29-27 lead with 147 remaining in this highly entertaining and competitive third quarter. 29-27, 143 to go. 
Corrado, chest high over to Mako. Mako puts it on the floor, weaves again. Mako has a way of getting to the basket, couldn't finish. Here comes Cologne on the breakout. Oh, nice pass, and they're going to get the foul. Yeah. Daniel did a, an excellent job of having his head up and seeing the court, but they got the foul well, before the pass. Well, that's a good foul because that was a layup. Absolutely, and the ball was in. Freeland with only four points so far in this quarter, a 7-4 quarter in favor of Heights. A lot of missed bunnies, Coach. You are correct. High pass over to JJ, back over to Cologne. Cologne picks up his dribble. Brito, long three. Got it! Oh. Give Heights the lead by one. Wow. And listen to this crowd. This place is electric. Corrado weaving. Can't get it to fall. Ball tipped around. Brito runs it down. Oh, nice steal by Casanova, but Latima gets it back. That should be a walk. There's no call. And we're going to get a 30 second timeout by Heights. Good call. Timeout by Coach Casadas. Let's take a break. This place has come unglued, Coach. We'll be back to Hazel Maria. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 54 seconds to go in the third quarter. And the Heights Hawks have come roaring back. A one-point lead, Coach. And they had six on the court. Only Scranton Prep could play with six players. That's Williamsport. <laughs> That's going to live in infamy. <laughs> Ragas. Taps the brakes at the doorstep, up and, and in. two for Lopez. Lopez. And there's a bump foul. Yeah, Vargas didn't want to let Freddie get started, so you know, pick the poison again. Don't let the thoroughbred get started in the race. No. Four-point Heights lead. Passing over to inbound, over to Corrado. 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Freddy across the timeline, off the screen. Drives to the basket, throws it up, no call. And Lloyd gets fouled and he'll go to the line. And there he is again, right where he needs to be, doing what he's supposed to do. Freeland at the line, shooting. Six for 12 for the line, right at 50%. And Lloyd's been there a few times. He has. Chase a little hard. He's been hard on, on just about every one. You like to see the young man take a little bit of time, get some good rotation on the ball, bend your knees, and follow through. Yeah, the good news is free throw shooting is something you can work on. Absolutely. And that's a little hard also. Ball batted around, and that is going to be, it should be Heights ball, and it's going to be Freeland ball, as it was tipped, evidently. And Casanova, no, Corrado's going to trigger the inbound. 28 seconds to go. Maybe a give and go here off the inbound pass. Over to Mako, spots up for three. That's off. Ball batted around again. Mako pulls the rebound down again. 22 seconds to go. Three ball on the way. And he knocked that one down. He did. Oh, and there's going to be an offensive foul there. Tied at 32 with 11 seconds left in this third quarter. Boy, good look by Mako. Knocked it right down. You got to be careful, though. There's a lot of John going on down there right now. You don't want to see somebody get teed up. Toronto spots up for three. That's off. 
and the Tiegman knocks it out as he went with .09 seconds to go. Correct. So the only thing he can do here, Coach, is throw it up for a tip. There's not enough time for a turn and a shot. All right. See right. if they get their bigs underneath. Maybe Lloyd on an alley-oop. Oh. oh. They had their look. Yeah, they got a look there. Corrado well, put it off the rim. Three quarters Freeland of the books. 32. We Ice are tied at 32. 32. We head to the fourth. Let's take a break. Cheerleaders on the court. We'll be back. All right, we're back here in the Hazel area. Three quarters in the books, Coach. It's a mirror image up there. 32 to 32. Freeland is shooting 11 for 26 from the field, 2 for 13 from behind the arc. They turned it over 12 pounds, pound, times. Excuse me. They have 19 rebounds. They're 6 for 14 from the foul line for Heights. They're scrappy, 8 for 17 from the field, 3 of 8 from behind the arc, 13, 14 turnovers. 13 rebounds and 5 for 8 from the free throw line. What a perfect adjective to describe Heights. Scrappy. I like that. And I don't mean that in a bad way. No, it isn't. It's a good way. Baragas, they're going from right to left on your screen. Baragas taps the brakes over to Latiqua. He's been dynamite tonight along with Colon and Lopez. And the ball will stay here with the Hawks. And now what J.J.'s done is he's afforded himself a little bit of wiggle room as he did not pick up a foul in that quarter. And there's a turnover there. Corrado with the ball. And that is tipped. Off of J.J. Just going to go to the Whippets. Casanova in down the ball. 540 to go. You come out in a full court press. Dela Cruz pressing over to Casanova. They break it easy. Casanova backs it up back over to Mako. He's hit the tying three-pointer. Drives baseline, running one-hander. Can't get the fall. Lloyd, another rebound. Back out to Casanova. Mako pulls another three. No good. Tehansky tries to run it down. He does into the hands of Corrado. Freddy step back three. Short again. Here come the Hawks. Break the team at the doorstep. Gets it in. Heights by two. 5.09 to go. Numbers three missed. Three missed three pointers. Give Latigua 14 points. Corrado hands it back to Mako. 4.56 to go in the game. Heights by two. Mako long three. That's short. Into the hands of Latigua. And it's going to be Heights ball as it's just tipped. Good hustle by Mako there. Four forty-six to go. Boy, coach, we saw two good games so far. Yeah, keep an eye on Latigua as he's, he's gimping around. He's rubbing that calf. That could be a cramp. They're going to call a jump ball there. That was quick. Position now is going to the Freeland Whippets off of that exceptionally quick call. Over to Mako, 445 to go. Over to Corrado. Left wing extended. Freddie tries to Hansky at the doorstep. Get has it blocked. Into the hands of Ragas. Oh, we play on there. No call. Matigua, jumper, can't get it to fall. I think Heights got away with a travel there. Mako tries the bullet pass and it was tipped away. It was tipped. Into the hands, ball. it'll stay here with Freeland. But Heights had a point blank shot at a layup. Yep. 420 to go. 34-32, coach. 
See Over if, to Mako. See if that comes back in the end. That was right there. Casanova can't get it to fall, and another jump ball, and this time it'll be Heights ball, and the possession arrow will be in favor of Freeland next time. 4-11 to go, coach. Another nail biter. Yeah. Fans getting their money's worth tonight for sure. Absolutely. Latigba, he's been fantastic and almost threw it away. And Casanova read that the pass. That was Cologne. Back to Lopez, back over to Colon. Colon, little shake and bake, back out to Vargas. Top of the key, 348 to go. Tries to get it inside to Latigba. Cologne throws it in reverse, can't get it to fall. Ball batted around into the hands of Mako. Mako can't get it to fall, no call on that either. And West Hazel now slowing the ball down. Into the corner for August. Has it blocked by Casanova, but right in the hands of Brino. And Tehansky just moved them out. Time and they're out. gonna call a timeout. Full timeout. Should we take a break? Yes. 318 to go. Just a reminder, the winner of tonight's game will return on Thursday evening to face Valley for the Anthracite Basketball League Championship. Dribbles around, right wing, bounce pass in low. That's Lopez got caught in the air there. Back out to Colon. Back out to Vargas at the top of the key, right in front of the spike line there. Three minutes even to go. Two point lead for Heights. A one possession game, and hey, Heights can afford to run some clock here and get a good shot. Dequa bodies his way in. Turnaround jumper is no good off the back of the tin. Big rebound, rebound by Colon. And they can look to reset. In the corner to Brito. Back out to Vargas. Bounce pass. Antigua trying to post up and good defense by Freeland there. As Wallace steals it away. He came around from the back side. And, and there's a push right there and it's going to be one and one now. As both, well six fouls for Freeland, six for Heights. But Freeland will be in the bonus now with 226. Coach, how important are those free throws now? They're important. I mean, I I, I don't know I don't, I don't know what else to, to tell you. I mean, it's it's going to be the difference in this game, I believe. Now you've got Heights with seven team fouls. You got Freeland with six. And now it's going to be a matter of, like you said, you got to put the ball in the basket. And he missed the front end of a one on one. Oh, wow, a big collision there. And Wallace going to be called for the foul. It should be the seventh team foul on Freeland. Yep, and Cologne is going to limp to the line. Boy, I'll tell you what, Heights has given Freeland fits tonight. Absolutely. And every time... Every single time in this game that Freeland has had a chance. Yeah, they were up by eight twice. Knocks it down. They have not been able to. That's a big free throw. That's a big free throw. Good. I think they don't know about it. 
Second one on its way is good. Ice and Mr. Cologne's veins. We get a substitution. Yep, Wallace into the ball game for Centano. And I was just informed, Coach, we're going to have a player of the game up here in the booth. Sounds good. After this game, we'll have Christian go down and get him when we decide who it is for the winning team. Who almost, almost the walk is casting over. Stopped himself, short of the turnover. Casanova running one-handers, good. That's money. Big-time players make big-time shots, Coach. Correct. Lead is four. Overtime lurking here. Two minutes to go in the game. Oh, there's nice Antigua. Now it's a four-point lead for Heights as they've gone back up 38-34. Oh, I'm sorry. I got that's all right. Uh-oh. Let's see who that's on. And that's what they're going to be shooting. They are. It's Vargas has picked up a foul. Yep. 16 points for JJ tonight. And Christian, you were just told there, you got to get our player to game once the game's over and get him up here. Well, I don't know. We have to see who wins. They missed nine free throws tonight. Freeland has six for 15. Toronto at the line. Christian, our stat man, doing his usual stellar job. And that one's off the back. I'm a rip rebound by Casanova. Into the hands of Latigua. 1.43 to go. Heights moving the ball. And a big basket by Cologne. And these Heights fans are hysterical in a turnover. And then turned it right back. Casanova with the ball and a foul. And... If you're height, you're up by six. The last thing you want to do is have the clock stop. And that's a big foul, and that's going to be it for Isaiah Vargas. He's going to foul out of this game. And he's their point guard. He's out, correct. And that hurts. And they'll have a chance to make a substitution. Yeah. It's going to be Dela Cruz. Coach Casadas doing some shifting around over there. And we'll see how big that is. Six point lead, well, minute 28 left. If you're Freeland, there's no need to panic. No. You're at the line with 128 to go. You're in the bonus. Next foul for Freeland. Missed the foul shot. And they're gonna call a violation. Nope. Didn't hit anything, I believe. Didn't hit. Right, so it's, so. Gonna, be, it's gonna be their uh, heights ball. And now Freeland's probably gonna have a quick foul here. They have 17 fouls. Well, we'll see who's going to handle the ball. Well, Heights with it's nine. Be so the next, the next free throw foul from uh, Heights, Freeland will shoot two. Correct. Seeing there, a little uncertainty. They're very uncertain. Cologne over to Lopez. Long cross court pass to Clea. And it's going to be. And, and Heights right now, Heights doesn't need to rush. Right? They're no. in the driver's seat. They don't need to, ma to make, and Freeland's going to get the timeout. They need to just spread the floor and make, make Freeland overplay, backdoor maybe, or foul. We got a minute here. Let's take a quick break. Jump around. Inbounding the ball, game a long way from over, coach. 
I see they're denying there. Into the corner. Good hands by Mako. Turnaround jumper from the yellow. Oh. Are you kidding me? Jose Lopez. Are you kidding me? Lopez knocks it down. 14 points on the night for him. Freeland foul, number four, Chase Lloyd. And we got a timeout by Coach Casadas. They just called, now the public address announcer just said timeout. that Chase Lloyd committed a foul, Fox. but yet they're down Freeland shooting free throw, so something, have yeah. to try and get that straightened out. But you talk about ice water in somebody's veins. Well, he hit that from the elbow. He no. Did. No hesitation, nothing. He got an eight-point lead now, Paul. Let's let's see where this is gonna go. What the deal is? Who's ball it's gonna be or what? Because I'm not ready for the home yet. I know what I heard. They announced that foul on Chase Lloyd. Although get a look at the scoreboard and see what's straightened out here. It's Freeland is shooting free throws. I think Coach Casadas is trying to find out what's going on here. Mako is on the line, shooting two. And most importantly for Freeland, the clock stops. First one up, first one good. Freeland has not helped themselves out tonight from the charity stripe, that's no, for sure. Not. That is only their third point this quarter, Coach. The game was tied at 32, and Mako hits two big ones. Lead is six. They got a foul quick, or turn it over. Oh! oh and remember, you don't need points Lopez if your heights. Throws it away. 51.9 seconds to go, still a boatload of time Correct. in the hands of Corrado. Freddie takes it across the timeline, weaves his way, backs his way in right to the basket, lays it up and in. Timeout. And a quick timeout with 38.5 seconds to go and a four point lead. All right, if you're Coach Casadas now, you gotta calm the soldiers down. <laughs> Well, don't forget, the point guard is out. Right. But there's no need to panic. And that's what happened in that last possession. And credit Freeland for doing what they need to do to make the basket and get themselves down to a, still a two-possession game. There's a lot of time left, though. Well, let's, let's assess the situation. 42-38 heights. They've got the ball. Possession arrow goes to Freeland. Freeland is out of timeouts. They are in the bonus. If we are correct, so they will. Freeland. Freeland is shooting two. Freeland is shooting three. right. Heights is in the bonus yet, shooting one and one. Yep. So maybe a quick foul right off the bat by the Whippets. What do you think there? Well, I mean, you want to inbound the ball, that's the first thing. I know, but if, if you're Freeland, I'm saying, how much do you let? Oh, I foul immediately. There you go. I put it on the line and, and try to shorten up this game. Extend this game, excuse me, as long as I can. I foul right off the inbound if I don't get the steal. And over to the team, right? I foul right here. And Mackoff gives him the foul. Five seconds came off the clock. And that'll be the eighth foul for Freeland. Freeland foul on one. number five, Eddie Mako. His third. Double bonus in effect. On the line, so JJ now. Lantigua to shoot yeah. two. There you go, double bonus. So he's got two free throws coming. So he's going to shoot two. I thought they were still in the one and one. It says 18 fouls. 
This and the they first. are in the one 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 right, yeah. yeah. There so. was no double bonus. I wasn't losing my mind here. 29 seconds to go. Freeland needs a bucket here. And almost turned it over. Toronto, mid-range jumper is short. And there's Lantigua. And they're going to get a foul on Chase Lloyd. And well, there he is doing the dirty work again for Heights. Well, I'll tell you what. Freeland got the shot they wanted. Correct. I mean, they had a point-blank shot. And it'll still be one and one here. Was on number four, Chase Lloyd. Grayson Tehansky back into the game for Freeland. Little offense defense very To the line, J.J. Lantigua shooting two. Missed it first one again. Here comes Mako. Pull up three. That's good. That's a three no for Eddie Mako. One point lead. One point lead. And they got to get a quick foul. And they do with five seconds to go. They let a lot of time come off the clock. All right. So you call that. Now they'll be shooting two. On Curtis Casanova, number three. And that will send. Wow. Freeland come roaring back here. They have him. Let's not underestimate. Let's not send underestimate JJ what to the Isaiah Vargas two. means for the Heights team. Yep. But he'll shoot two now. Heights missed their last two free throws. First one up, first one good. Well, well, Freeland has he a good timeout by Coach Sands here. Hawks. It's a two-point lead with five seconds to go. No timeouts for Freeland. No timeouts. Now. Be looking for Mako or Freddy here if you're yep. Freeland. Shot is good, one by three. Baseball pass up to Casanova. Casanova for three. No good. Oh. And there's your horn. Wow, you got an upset. Look at this. Listen to this place. This is well, awesome. the final score. Heights is 44. Freeland 41. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your attendance and participation tonight at Hazleton Area High School. Hope to see you back here tomorrow when the girls compete in the semifinals. And of course, we hope to see you back here on Thursday evening for the championship for both the girls and boys. Until that time, we wish all of you Safe a good evening. Safe to say an evening. upset, Paul Bo. Well, I would say when the number one seed goes down, it's definitely an upset. And I'll tell you what, fantastic. We're going to get J.J. up here. Boy, he had a wonderful game, 18 points for the young man, and did a lot of the dirty work that, that needed to be done underneath rebounds, tenacious defense, and did a nice job keeping himself in the game. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he got himself three fouls there. And, and did a nice job the second half of taking care of business. Well, we got two of them coming up here. Oh, we do? Yeah, Christian got two of them here. All right. Come on in here, young man. We got number two. You're up here quick. Yeah. I'm going to get you on in a second here. All right. 
You on, Coach? I'm on. Can you hear us, JJ? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Hey, what a game out there. 44-41. Your point guard fouls out. Take us through the last minute of the game. Well, a lot was going through my mind. I needed a way to fight through the game, so I tried to carry the team on my back. And, well, it worked most of the half, but... We still got the W, so I got what I wanted out of the outcome. Absolutely. 18 points for you on the night, officially there. Daniel Cologne with 14. This young man over here, number four there, Mr. Brito, four points, five points off the bench. Fantastic game. We'll talk to you in a second also, but now you got to set your sights on on number uh, on Valley on Thursday night. You guys played them before. Tell us a little bit about that matchup. Well, we played them at home, and... Um, it was a tough game, but we only lost by one. But number 15, I'm going to try and guard him my best, and let's hope we win the championship. All right. Coach, anything? Oh, just a tremendous effort by you, young man. And I thought I thought you got a little bit frustrated when you picked up your third foul. It was obvious you didn't want to come out of the game because you're a competitor. But I thought you really did a nice job playing smart basketball to not get your fourth or fifth foul because you do mean a lot to the team. But... Well, I'll tell you what, what a group of scrappy players you guys are to hang in there against a team that was obviously much taller, but it didn't seem to matter. Uh, they had a couple times where they could have got up double digits, but you guys kept hanging around, hanging around, and then you really took it to them the last quarter and a half of the game. So congratulations and looking forward to seeing you on Thursday. Thank you, and follow up to what you said about their toe. I didn't really care about that because, like, at the end of the day, height is nothing but... It doesn't matter how big they are, how tall they are. You just got to put up a good match. And that's a mindset. Two big free throws at the line. Ice in your veins. No sweat. Oh, I was, I was scared. <laughs> oh, I was scared. Well, thanks for your honesty, JJ. Hey, let's get a picture up here. Christian will get a picture with us here. You can keep that on for the picture here. Everybody coming Everybody in? Everybody in there. Yep, yep. All four of us in here. There we go. All right, and let's put this young man on here, number four, Mr. Brito there on the thing. JJ, thanks. Good luck on Thursday. Thank you. Good luck, young man. Thank you. All right, Romeo, you came off the bench. You're filling in for the point guard when he fouls out. Yeah. Ice in your veins. Hey. Uh, I always practice on my jump shot all the time. You know, it's not the easy, but uh, you just got to work hard, and, you know, it just... Uh, believe in yourself. Don't quit. Never, you know. Yeah, and, and we believe in, and we say it all the time, Coach and I, when we do football games, the next man up mentality. And you were the next man up. You stepped in. Isaiah goes out. You step in, handle the ball, and it got a little scary at the end there. got a little yeah. close, but, hey, in the end, you guys got the victory. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just hope my teammates out, you know, just working as a teammate, you know, just uh, – Believe in ourselves that we're going to take a dub always, you know, especially for the bad kids out there, too, that they don't believe in themselves. But it's all right, though. I always tell them, uh, remember, believe in yourself and uh, believe that you're just going to win a, you know, in your dreams. Believe in your dreams that you're going to win a championship, all that, you know. Absolutely. Coach? Well, I just, I'm happy for you guys. It was a great game. Both games tonight were great, very competitive. Not a lot of jawing going on, but enough where that's going to happen in, in playoffs and, and in competitive games. But I thought, I thought you guys did an awesome job. Uh, you wouldn't go away all night. You know, you, you hung around, hung around, and then the fourth quarter, you yeah. took advantage. Third quarter, you took advantage, outscored them in both quarters, and you end up winning this game. So congratulations, thank enjoy, you, you. and yeah. we'll see you on Thursday. Yeah, rest up tomorrow, rest up on Wednesday, and you got a big one on Thursday. All right, thank and, you very much and we for know, And we know that on Thursday, you guys won't be thinking about this at all. You'll be no, totally focused in school, Yeah, correct? we'll definitely be focused on God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, Romeo. Thanks for coming right, up. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, too. Uh, have a great day. God All bless right. You. Thank, thank you, you, Romeo. Romeo, great job. Great job, man. What a great bunch of kids here. We got some final stats here. Awesome. Coach, we couldn't ask awesome. for two better games. And no. Better, I mean, just good kids here on both ends. And, you know, if the Freelander season ends at 16-3, and three, but I'll tell you what, what a strong team they have. You know, Corrado, Casanova, I mean, Mako, Lloyd, Tehansky. I mean, they, they got a really, really strong day. But, hey, tonight was Heights' night. They weren't going to go away. 
Their record is now 13-7. and seven. That doesn't matter. It's all out the window. they got to win one more game, and they're the champs of this league. Every single thing Sarge said at halftime about this basketball team. Yeah, he's right. Did it not come to fruition absolutely. in the third and fourth quarter? It's just simple as that. And I mean, and that's taking absolutely nothing away from Freeland. Not nothing. There's definite, definite, definite talent in all four of these teams. And an absolute pleasure to get to do this game tonight. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And let's do our final stats. We'll give it our thank yous and we'll get out of here. Uh, for Heights, 44 points. They were 12 for 25 from the field. That is 48%. Three of eight from behind the arc. They didn't shoot many, but when they did, they knocked them down. 17 turnovers, 20 rebounds, despite being outsized. Huge. They're dead even with rebounds for Freeland. 41 points. 13 for 34 from the field, just 2 for 18 from behind the arc, and that was their Achilles heel. They only turned the ball over 12 times. Rebounds were dead even at 20. It's a final score. Heights wins 44-41. We'll do our thank yous. We'll get out of here because we got the girls tomorrow night here. Absolutely. want to thank Christian to for our stats, doing a great job. We will see him tomorrow. He's going to cancel practice, he said, and he'll be here. All right. First game. First game will be here. Well, he's not going to be here for the second? Jeez. We'll have to get somebody to fill in for him. And uh, Bobby Mahalik, our producer, Damian, thank you for everything he did and getting us the rosters. Kathy Brogan for getting the rosters to us all and making this broadcast possible. Once again, thanks for Hazel Area for having us, the Hazel Area YouTube. It's a final score, 44-41 Heights wins. They advance to Thursday's final game of the Anthracite Middle School. For my partner, Rich Salonis, I'm Paul Bo. Till Thursday. Actually, till tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tally-ho!